promised you all I am back as I promised. I had a little an emergency that I needed to take care of. So if you will rejoin me if you are with me earlier. This is your girl Sharman Williams. This is part two of self-care during uncertain times. This is part two. I'm just waiting for a few people to um, to join. I had quite a few in the room um, before for part one. So, hi, hi, hi. I see that I have some that are coming in. Thank you for joining me. This is part two. I'm going to get right back on it. Hi, Kara. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Kara, this is part two of self-care during uncertain times makeup tutorial I had to stop a moment I had a room full of people and I had to stop just a moment ago to go take care of a little quick emergency but all is well thank you so much for joining we are doing self-care today I have already shared I'm going to share again uh, thank you, Ms. Steele. Oh, thank you all for joining again. Give me a like or a love to let me know that you're in the room. I appreciate everybody who is coming back for me to complete this segment. But I, I have talked about today self-care, keeping your body as physically fit and healthy as you can during the pandemic. So just a quick recap, I have my um, detox water that I've made. Uh, take a lemon, squeeze it, get the juices going, roll it, cut it in half. Throw that lemon, get a ginger root, cut it up, put that ginger root off in about a gallon to a gallon and a half in a stock pot over the fire for about 10 minutes. Let it come to a boil. And you've got, hey, Corey Wilson, thanks for joining. You've got a natural remedy for a self-detox. As I was thinking of all the things that I wanted to put into my immune. Hi, thank you so much for joining me again, Miss Muhammad. I appreciate it. All is well on the home front. I went to create a little emergency and I am back. But your detox water. I wanted to do a mental, spiritual, and physical detox going into this time of crisis as I begin to get phone calls about how to stay strong, how to stay mentally fit, how to continue to move on even though we're at home. Thank you for all the love, Corey Wilson. I surely appreciate you um, um, as we're trying to go through this time of uncertainty. So I've got my detox water and then I added some cucumber just for taste and I do drink it. I felt myself just getting a little bit uh, down a little about three days ago about the uncertainty um, of everything that's that's on the horizon. And my complexion really follows the mood that I'm in. If it, it really follows my soul. So if my face is not looking right with anybody, if you're not getting enough rest, your eyes are going to show it. If you're not putting the right things into your body, even just drinking too much caffeine, your face is going to show it. So I saw that I was just not looking my normal chipper self. And I know that a big part of making it through this epidemic is going to be to make sure you continue to do things that help you to feel good. So I was sharing, I'm getting real close to the camera. I was sharing with everybody else. I know the detox is working because my skin is beginning to shine. Um, I am getting older, so I got a few age spots and I've taken this time to spend a lot of time out in my yard. I absolutely love gardening. It's one of my joy zones. So I got a few spots, a few red spots. Those are actually mosquito bites because me and my face and mosquitoes don't get along. But just that glow that's coming back. So my detox water, detox water is working. Those are my signs that it's working, that I'm getting this really bright, um, no need for a shimmer uh, blush in different parts of my face. I can see that my body is responding to, to putting that detox water in there. That lemon goes in there and just eats up everything and flushes everything out. I have done my facial detox as well, starting with a five-step at-home facial that anybody can do. I love Mary Kay for their cleanser. So I had a Mary Kay cleanser. Uh, lavender uh, got a good... Um, what am I trying to say? I lavened it up really good. Got a good lather going. And then I actually rinsed it off. Gave my face a break. Then I went in because I wanted to be fresh and new going through this thing. I went in and did a facial scrub over the counter. St. Eyes facial scrub. Got all that dead skin off. Worked that off and got that off. Then to bring back the radiance and some balance, I did a pearl essence uh, balance, balancing spray. And to put natural oils back into my face, I did the 
jojoba, which is a hydrating oil, deep concentrating, bright and skin softener. So the only thing that I didn't have because we're at home in confinement and it wasn't essential, I did not have a hydrating mask. But had I had a hydrating mask here at home, then I would have um, taken my time to put on a hydrating mask to cap that off. So you can do self-care at home with things that you have in your refrigerator. If you don't have it in your refrigerator, it's a good time to pick up some fruits and vegetables. Anyway, make sure that you're doing your vitamin C to uh, boost up your immune system. And also make sure that if you are an allergy sufferer, please make sure I take Allegra D. There's Zyrtex. There's all kind of allergy medicine out there. If you are an asthma sufferer, please make sure during this pandemic, that you're taking your sinus medication, whether it's pres prescribed or over-the-counter, because what they're finding is if you have asthma, your immune system is going to be compromised during this epidemic. You're going to fall in that vulnerable category. If it's already hard to breathe and there's nothing wrong with your lungs, then those um, allergy sufferers that often bring on asthma, you want to make sure that you're rare prepared. So keep your allergies and your asthma intact at this time you got an inhaler use it if you have a hi michael brown hi principal brown thanks for joining me um corey yes my spiritual brother thanks for joining me um you want to make sure that you're checking um your allergies and you're staying as healthy with your allergies and asthma because the last thing you want is to go to the hospital compromise on top of the coronavirus and you already have asthma so get your nebulizer medicine have it ready if you take a uh, fast acting inhaler, have those things ready and start building up your immune system. So I talked about earlier having the smell of abundance around me. This is a time where we're uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's coming next. So I make sure that even everything around me, I want it to uplift me as much as possible. So I have my natural burning oils and I shared earlier I'm just going to do a recap because I see new people in the room um I have my my favorite combination burning today which is grapefruit and vanilla so I'm burning grapefruit and vanilla today because they do me well grapefruit is a citrus so when you smell a lemon a grapefruit an orange anything from the citrus category it has the ability to, natu to naturally be a mood booster. It's going to boost your mood, okay? Thank you, Mike Brown. He said he's so proud of me. Mike Brown um, was my ninth grade geography teacher, later was my principal, and um, uh, was a great role model for me in um, helping me to see my dream of being an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. Um, he blew a lot of wind up under my wings, and I just want to take this time to say thank you very much, um, Mr. Mike Brown, for all the encouragement that you gave me when I decided to step out into another realm, and this is just another platform uh, me deciding to do makeup tutorials for Life in the Go for anybody that's in a rush. I couldn't get Life in the Go to act right with Facebook. So I said, this is more of a self-care along with a makeup tutorial, along with straight talk, you know, just talking from the heart as we go through this epidemic. And we have to find ways to be accountable and love each other from a distance but still love each other very truly and very up close and very much so from the heart. So thank you for joining, Mr. Mike Brown. I'll get back to education in a minute because that's where I left off on, but since I'm starting over, I'm just going to do a recap. So um, if you are not into essential oils and you like the wax candle or the scentsies, again, you're going to see a pattern that's going to show up with me. I have mango, sorbet, lemon, cello, I think is how you, how you say it, but... I have a lemon scent burning in my bathroom and a berry chill. So I like to mix lemons and berries together because, again, I want the scent of abundance. As I shared earlier, that struck a chord with Ryan Blair um, Smith. There are so many things that's, that's being removed from us. Um, we can't go to our favorite restaurant. We can't. Some of our closest family members, if they're elderly, they're, we're removed 
from them from through flesh. We're not able to give those those hugs and those rubs and those kisses on the forehead and on the cheeks. So this is a time to make sure you stay uplifted because you're isolated. Isolation means alone, being alone. And humans, we're human beings. We don't do well being alone. This is really hard for me. If you know me, I'm a social butterfly. I stay moving. So as much as I needed the time to slow down, it could have very well so been a tough isolation time for me if I had not begun doing the things that help me stay um, uplifted. So I have my favorite scents, even my body scents, my, my pear berry and my um, strawberry picnic from Bath and Body Works and those sprays also to go along with that, the strawberry picnic. And um, again, I'm very citrusy. So I have the kawaii, kawaii um, flower, which is like a Hawaiian scent. And then I have my coconut mango. So you can see the mango, the peaches and the pears and all those things that are those, those fruits that smell really, really good because I need the smell of abundance. I need everything around me to speak abundance, although the situation that's occurring around me speaks limitation. Limitation. Hi, Dr. Cole. Thanks for joining. Say hi to Mr. Mike Brown if he's still on here. Two of my favorite educators, Dr. Sally Cole. First opportunity to go into the classroom was through Miss Sally Cole, first year at Douglas um, High School. A wonderful mentor and a personal mentor in so many different ways. Um, I, I know it seems strange, but in the time that we end, this is a great time to give people their flowers. Wow. They are here, so thank you so much. Yeah, Doc, I saw you just said hi to to, uh, to Mike, but like I said, Mike Brown, Dr. Cole, two of my two of the most impactful um, mentors in the education field for me as a personal teacher, Mike Brown, and then both as as principals, uh, always there for me for anything that I was trying to do to to better the learning environment for our students. So with that being said, when I ended my last broadcast, I had a little emergency I had to go take care of all this well, I was speaking about the fear of parents with education, not knowing where we're going to go. And the message that I want to send to parents is, is going to be okay. Your babies are not going to forget everything that they've learned. It only feels like a, a panic because it's not the naturally occurring end of school that we are used to. We are used to having certainty in knowing when the last day of school is going to be. So thank you, um, Shanika Colbert. Thank you for joining. Um, I was speaking about as educators, we prepare every year for the end of school going into summer. We try to send things home to keep, to keep our students uh, connected. Um, thank you, Tamla, for joining to keep our students connected with, they have, with what they have learned the previous year, the year that they're leaving. But I was sharing with parents in the educational field, a big part of what we do is preparing for your students when they first return back to school. So the first three weeks of school, when we return from summer break, that is the time that we build things we call rituals and routine to set a new tone in the classroom. Thank you, Wendell, for joining for setting a new tone in the classroom as some of them move from teacher to teacher, move from grade to grade, the expectations may change. But after we get our rituals and routines together and we create safe ha havens for our students in the classroom, the very next thing that we begin to do is we begin to do review work. We want to tap back into the prior knowledge. So sometimes it's kind of hitting back in the forefront. Thank you, Miosha. And we have to do some things with our students that we call review. We come back in and we want to figure out what did you retain? So just remember, we were only about maybe eight weeks going into the end of the school year. The other thing that I was reminded of as an educator is that at the end of the school year, the last six weeks is generally, it's changed a little bit the last two years, but we were mostly going to test prep. So most of your core education for most students, it has already happened. There's a wind down that begins to happen the last two months of school. We begin to look at what did we not cover for the year. We begin to look at if we have in the school testing, we go into a test mode to begin to help students get ready to show to us all the, thing they've, all the things they've learned through the year. So it is not a wasted time. It's just a transition time. So I just want to calm parents in knowing um, it's not an end all. Your students will be okay. 
um, have some grace, have some mercy, because we are going to have to figure out as a state, as um, an education institutions, how to do distance learning. Um, it may not stay the same as the way that it starts. I was speaking to an educator on yesterday. They're now concerned about um, the mail system, being careful about opening your mail because maybe the virus can live on paper substances that are made on, on paper or cardboards. So those are things that are going to have to be looked at. You know, looked at. It may be a good idea at first to say, well, we'll get packets in your hand. We are not absolutely sure about everything with this virus. We don't know. Um, could a pack, Could we send you a packet that could possibly have coronavirus on it? Just have some grace and mercy knowing that the, the leaders in education in the state of Oklahoma, in every other state, in every other entity across the nation is doing their best to figure this out. So if they go to pure distance learning, if it was not a um, fully technology institution before, it's going to be some grace and some mercy. But the thing I spoke about is my mother, who's a retired school teacher, longtime servant of education, used to remind me, she'd say all the time, Charmin, just remember, education starts from home and parents are doing the best that they can. I want to remind you, continue to do the best that you can. It's just going to look different. Now we're going to have a lot of more education, not starting at home, but being at home. I want you to give yourself some grace if you are a parent that's going to have to work from home, at the same time, raise your children. And I say raise your children because they're going to be with you 24 hours a day. So we're used to having our children full-time Saturday and Sunday. If you have a kid that is at least school-aged or early preschool age throughout the year, nine months out of the year, we're used to only really providing care for our children for 48 hours at a time with five days in between. Don't panic. Don't feel like you have to know everything. Um, stay in contact with whatever communication that your teachers and your education institution sets up with you. Do your best, and it's going to be a situation. Uh, yes, practice social distancing during this time. Yes, Mike Brown. It's going to be a time where... You're going to have to give yourself some grace because you're going to be learning how to do a new thing. If you've never homeschooled children, it's going to be new, creating a schedule. Um, I'm working. There's some other people working that are your school districts are working to provide um, all that they can so that this can be the best learning situation um, for students. So that's what I'm going to say about education we're on an extended break. We're going to come back. We're going to do some review. We're going to do our best to make sure that our students and our babies continue to learn. Um, we're going to look at some unique ways to celebrate seniors. This is an awful tough time. I know Dr. Cole has Jalen, who's a senior this year, uh, my baby Perry, who's a senior this year, and parents of seniors are going to have a rough time. Your, your kids may somewhat grieve not having a traditional end of the school year. I spoke earlier they look forward to the last day of school. Everybody looks forward to not the last day of school of the school year, but the last day of school of their K through 12 education. So be mindful, be loving as you deal with those seniors and helping them to see the steps that will happen next and to deal with this big breath of uncertainty um, that we have of what comes next. So all of those things are going to happen again. I want. I just want to say, it's going to be okay. So focusing on the self care, I needed to really boost my self care to make sure that I keep my routines the same. Um, everybody that knows me knows this is my traditional wear, but I have this thing where when I go to the to, to my uh, barber to my stylist, I say, Stacy, I'm gonna need you to take this off of my ears and pull that down real pretty through the back. So that's how I describe my cut. But right now, I'm like everybody else. I'm having to make sure I be the best person that I can be at home. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about about self care is you feel how you look. Um, Erica Coleman spoke about getting up, working from home, the, the purpose of her getting up every day and putting on clothes. But if you dress gorgeous, you tend to feel gorgeous. If you dress professional, that's why it's called professional dress, 
you tend to function in a professional mode. So for me, it's important. I said, oh, I got to get back to my joy zones. I'm working out in the garden. I'm doing all those other things that I love to do. But I have to remember, I was going to say it like the old people used to say, girl, child, don't let yourself go. You cannot let yourself go during this time. Love on yourself just a little bit more. Give yourself a little bit more grace. So I usually do life in the go, uh, uh, blessings, beauty, and business on Saturdays at 12 o'clock. I usually go live. I thank you, Lakeisha, for joining. But it had been a while since I've gone live because I was so in the go. Thank you, uh, Theron, for joining and rejoining again. I appreciate you. Um, I couldn't get to my live that I was used to doing. So um, being encouraged by some of my other business partners and business besties and industry leaders here right here in Oklahoma, I reminded myself, you know, I got up and got ready to clean the house and was doing some house cleaning. And I realized I've been silent. I'm usually a strong voice for movement, for change, for um, uplifting and empowerment. And I shared with some other people that I did not speak um, prior to now because I wanted to make sure that I had a good grasp on myself. I wanted to give myself some time to take a break, to take a break in a way that I've never taken a break. I've told some people, if you can't breathe now, then you might just have difficulty with ease in life, no matter what time you're presented with, because this is the only time in history that I've witnessed um, government officials really saying that they are working with industry leaders in um, mortgage companies, with bankers. This is a time that they're really saying, this is not a time where, that we're going to really allow people to take your home. I've already received several messages from my own mortgage company saying during this time of uncertainty, if you are having difficulty making your mortgage, please reach out to us. Only time that I know that it wouldn't do people uh, repossess, repossessing a car wouldn't do you real good right now because not a whole lot of people to turn around and sell that car to. If everybody is probably trying to hold on to what they can until they see what the end is going to bring. Um, we do know for sure from my understanding that utility companies have been told do not cut off um, essentials like electricity, gas, and water. As long as I've been working, since I was 17 years old, as long as I've been responsible for myself since I was about 21 years old, that was always a concern to make sure that my mortgage payment was met, my car payment was met, and that I had utilities. So you can choose to worry um, uncontrollably and have your blood pressure to go sky high or you can choose to say, I have faith that God's got it all under control, even though I can't understand all of it. Um, for me, I've been sharing some resources. I got out, to, got out my tattered Bible, the one that I love the most, uh, of course, because it's got purple on it. Um, dear friend brought it for me. Um, Philippians 4, 6 through 8, be anxious for nothing. That's been keeping me during this time of uncertainty to make sure that I'm not anxious for anything. Even though I might be nervous, I'm not anxious. Even though I might, I've had times where I've been a little bit sad. When you get ready to go do something and you realize, oh, I can't go there. Um, when you got a taste for something in your mouth, like Pure 88, and you just want some shrimp and some crawfish because you miss in Louisiana. My hair, some of my my background with school at Southern University. So every now and then, Doc, I need some crawfish. I need some New Orleans in my system. And to think I can't go to Pier 88 and just get me a crab boil. So you are going to have to visit your joy zones. You're going to have to do things. Remember the things that truly make you happy. So that's what I've been doing. And so today I decided, you know what? I need to get up and play in some makeup because that's just my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do. Um, like I said, I did a detox. I said, oh, my skin is going. This will be a great time to put a little makeup on and see what I come up with. So I wanted to reach out and just talk about the importance of self-care during this uncertain time, um, uncertain in times of 
for many life and death, just just the reality that we live in. Um, Oklahoma has not been as hard as hit as some places like, thank you, Daryl, for joining. Thank you, Lakeisha, for joining. Has not been as hard as hit like the East Coast. Um, New Orleans, I mean, New Orleans has been heavily hit. I was speaking about New Orleans the other day with my son because many of his family members on his father's dad, on his father's side is in Louisiana. And I remember speaking to him and saying, this epidemic is going to be hard on the state of Louisiana because they are a Southern state that it truly believes in hospitality. And what that means is they gather often. It don't take much for them to decide to celebrate. They celebrate life. They even celebrate death different. Sometimes uh, this one, it's the one part in the world that death can be celebrated um, with a marching band going down the street and in, in somewhat in a celebration of life. So my heart goes out to everyone, um, but particularly those states um, like New York and places that gather a lot. That's part of their regular routine is to be amongst lots of people. So um, we have to do things, do things for ourselves while we're at home to make sure that we're remaining uplifted. I talked about my smell of abundance, um, using a word like abundance in a time when everything is kind of being taken away, where we lose control of the outside. But I'm still in control about the words that come out my mouth. So I choose to speak speak life, even though death could be knocking around the door for some. Death is a very current reality. But for the time that I have right now, appreciating the day, each day I'm learning to appreciate what is in my control, what I can be happy and joyful about right now. So makeup is still one of them, one of my joy zones. I said, oh, today I don't have nowhere to go, but... uh. Got up and put a little chemical through that head and got them curls back right because that's what I usually do. And I said, well, today I think I'm just going to start and do a makeup tutorial because for a while I was life in the go. I was going so much that I didn't have a chance to get back to my favorite thing to do, which is playing makeup. Right now, water is life. So I have my detox water. So I'm going to get right to it. Hey, sis, that's Miss uh, Dietra joining me, my sister Dee Dee. I am on here talking about uh, self-care in the light of uncertain times and still taking care of yourself, taking care of your household, making sure you're doing things to make sure that you have the best uplifted spirit going through this thing as possible. So I always start. My beauty secret is old-fashioned ponds, okay? So I just I always start my, my uh, facial care in the morning. I have dry skin, actually, so it may look like a lot, but it's gone before you can know it. But I always start with moisturizing my skin. That's where I start. Old-fashioned ponds, it's my secret. I am in my mid-40s, and I can say, thank God, I don't have any wrinkles right now. I ain't looking forward to getting them. I ain't going to be mad when I get them because they just tell me that I'm wise and I've lived a while and I know some things. But as of yet, I don't have them. And that's because I take good care of my skin. I saw my skin was getting a little bit out of hand. I said, ooh, my complexion is acting up a little bit. And I thought about it. My face always follows most people. I don't know if you know it. Your face follows your lifestyle. So if you're getting plenty of rest, your eyes are going to show it. Um, if you're eating well, vegetables, fruits, vitamins, your skin is going to show it. If you're lacking in sleep, your face is going to show it usually uh, through the eyes. If you're not sleeping enough, if you're stressed, your eyes will begin to darken. So I noticed that my eyes was darkening just a little bit. You can still see a little bit of it. It's not much, but they were quite dark through here. And I was getting a little darkening right along the edges of my eyes. And I said, oh, I'm stressing, even though I don't know it. I'm stressing just a little bit. Hi, Willie Ellis. Thanks for joining. Uh, coming back to the second part. And so when I saw that, the um, thank you for letting me know you loving it. When I saw that darkness coming um, in the creases of my eyes, um, again, you can still kind of see it right there. It's going away. And the creases and the darkness that was coming below my eyes, I said to myself, I'm stressing. 
I didn't even realize it because I kept on saying, I'm handling this thing just fine. But my face started giving me an indication and I got to thinking, oh, I probably have drank too many Coca-Colas. When you are trying to cope with something that is that feels like it's out of your control, we're all going to have coping, me coping mechanisms. Some people may overeat. Some people may not eat enough. Some people may turn to drinking. Some people may turn to drugs, whatever it is for me. I tend to down too many Coca-Colas. So my face was telling me, mm, you might be having too much Coca-Cola. You may not be dealing with this as well as you think. And I said, I know what I need to do. I need a detox of my body, my mind, and my spirit going through this thing. So I did my detox water. I did my own at-home five-step facial. And I've been doing the detox for about three days, and now it's showing. I've put a little moisturizer on, and you can really see now the, the natural glow. You see it on my nose. I can see it where the light is bouncing off right through here. And you can just see that my complexion is already lightening up. This was kind of all the way across that darkness, was all the way across that top um, eye. I, um, not eyelash, but the, across the top. And I had darkening below here. So to purify and take out everything that um, is accumulating that shows on my face, my face is always my first indicator of stress, I decided to do a detox. And I'm so glad that I did because I'm starting to feel better as a spirit uplift and to see that my skin tone is evening back out. You have so much control over what you naturally look like. Usually when I do makeup, I've got something going with my hair. I might might have color in my hair, but this time... I decided it was important because we all can't get to the beauty and barbershop right now. We all can't get to the nail tech right now. So I thought it was important for me to be a leader in saying, I always tell people, you really are enough just as you are. Um, when you begin to practice self-love, you begin to realize people either like you or they don't. I'm going to say that one more time. Somebody needs to hear that. People either like you or they don't. People either love you or they don't. So, so many times we're trying to um, hide or we're trying to um, create a persona that people will like. And so I said today, I ain't going to even wear a head wrap. I already did what I'm going to do to my hair. This is how it looks most of the time anyway if it doesn't have color on it. But I said I really wanted to spend some time in my natural state because I love my natural self too. I just like makeup. I just like makeup because it has the ability to transform. It changes my mood. Um, we spoke earlier about dressing how you feel. If you want to get the job interview, dress the position that you're applying for. So if you're applying for a leadership position, dress like a leader, dress professionally. If you are um, applying to be a fashion specialist, Make sure you go in looking a little fashionable. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, looking the part always helps embody the part. So a lot of times people ask me, well, how am I, you know, I'm highly successful in multiple things, uh, several entrepreneurship efforts, and then as well as continue to climb in the field of education, but always showing up authentically. Um, a lot of people... Um, yeah, they either love you or they don't love you. Um, I appreciate that. Yes, if I say something that you really like, let me know. Let me know so I can know that that I'm in the right ballpark. So I appreciate you all um, speaking back and, and posting in the comments because it's letting me know that I'm doing what I set out to do, which was positively uplift, empower, and impact. So dress the part. Act the part. Um, if you want to feel better, look better. So I thought, well, I'm just going to be home cleaning up today, but I said, I really, really want to get back to some of my routine. And for a while, my routine until I got so busy of all the spring events coming up was doing life in the go, um, blessings, beauty, and business, speaking to those things that empower women and showing you how to do makeup in 20 minutes with a limited amount of time and just five products was my goal. So today I decided, let me get back to my own routine and let me do one of the things I do best which is speak to people. Um, let me do one of the things that I do best, which is be a calming force when things are a little uncertain and a little up in the air. Let me fall into leadership and calm some parents 
concerns about this whole distance learning thing. Let me speak and add value to life today. Right now, the person that I am doing what I can give best to society during these uncertain times. Feel good about yourself. Practice self-care. Um, was reading a book <laughs> the other night because I shared that I read um, in my bathtub every night. Biggest part of my self-care routine is I take a very hot bath. Sometimes 30 minutes to an hour and a half is about as long as I'm known to be in there. Um, but it's so part of my routine that I don't sleep well if I don't have that time to myself. It's the time that I read to empower myself. It's the time that um, it's part of my sanctuary. You should have a sanctuary in your home that's a private space for you to renew your spirit daily. So my bathtub is that place. It's my most comfortable place. As you can tell, I love scents. I love soaps. I love water. But that's my time that I commune daily um, with God, with my higher power, um, that I speak out into the universe the things that I want to come to fruition. So in doing that, maintain your self-care. Hi, Carla. Thanks for watching. It is so important for you to maintain your self-care routines right now. So I put on the first layer of moisturizer. So now I'm going to put a primer on my eyelids right quick so I can go ahead and begin the makeup tutorial as I talk. I want to say thank you to my audience for watching. Thank you for letting me know if I have impacted you or touched you in some type of way that's been positive. Thank you for communicating with me. Now, this morning, the other thing that I did, I noticed when I say, don't let yourself go during the pandemic. Keep it together. My eyebrows was just growing, 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 growing all over the place. They were all over my face. And I said, now, you know you know better than this. You are not practicing self-care because you always keep your eyebrows arched. So one of the first things I did this morning was throw a quick little perm through my head so my curls could come back. So my hair was all over the place. I've been home. Why not? Um, but that's not what you want to do because you are falling to a place that's uncommon to you. So, yeah, don't fall into a place that's uncommon to you during uncertain times. So do those things that you still have control of to make sure that you are living your best life at your house during the pandemic. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I've arched those eyebrows this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting on my primer for my eyes. And that primer is a MAC primer. It's called Lay In Low Pro Long Wear Paint Pot. So it looks like this. Um, it's just almost kind of look like foundation. And remember, I am not a professional makeup artist. I don't do this as a professional. I have a personal love. I have years of experience as I like to call it, because I've been wearing makeup since I was about 13 years old. My first makeup, y'all, was Cherry Jubilee. My mama had Avon Cherry Jubilee. That was, and it's still one of my favorite lipsticks. But um, I was the kid whose mother was a fashionista herself, and she loved makeup as well. And uh, I had people that would say, so you can kind of see the difference between this is my right eye, this is my left, um, what that primer looks like when I actually get it on there. And what's going to happen is the primer is there so that the shadow stays on. If you wear makeup and you wear shadow, shadow eyeshadow is very light just in its texture itself. So a primer gives it something to, um, hey, Dr. Cole says she's taking a spa bath now. Thank you, Doc, and I, I, I appreciate you for letting me know that I am inspiring you practicing that self-care is so important but you can see already um the primer that's on my right eye and i just want to drag it out to make sure that it's balanced so this is how i start um laying the foundation for my makeup and the reason i keep playing around right up here is uh <laughs> actually i edged them this morning and uh, arch my eyebrows. Look like I got a piece I could have did a little bit better on. But that's the deal. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just supposed to be enjoyable. Um, so when you get that primer on there, it's going to set this edge up here. 
when I put the first layer of pink on, I'm going to do a pink, pink and purple eye today because pink is my favorite color and I needed a, I, some uplifting in my life. And so I also do color therapy. I do have on my core meditations, core meditations with Charmin, um, Corey Wilson. Thank you, Ruth, for joining. Thank you, Ms. Sister Bills. Um, I do have on my core meditations with Charmin t-shirt because I am also very much so into um, meditating with a singing um, healing bowl. And I'll, I'll be doing that at the end of this uh, makeup tutorial. I said I was just going to do some of everything today because like, do I really have a time limit? No, there's nowhere I have to be. So taking advantage of self-care and time um, during this pandemic. So you're going to really notice when I put my eyeshadow on this primer is really going to set the top of this eye. And again, I'm not a professional makeup artist. I do makeup online because I love makeup. And I started this makeup online thing because I was spending some time with one of my personal mentors who is also my family member. And uh, thank you, Noel, for joining. I appreciate you. Thank you, Gloria, for joining. Um, I was spending time with my personal mentor, one of my closest family members, um, Miss Deborah, and several people had been on to me about, Charmin D, I think you can do that makeup thing online. I think you should do makeup online. You always got your makeup on. It looks so pretty. And um, I was a little apprehensive at first because I was going, well, I'm not a professional makeup artist. And my cousin say, well, if you're not a professional makeup artist, how long does it take to become professional because you've been wearing makeup as long as I've known you since we would allow you to? And I said, wow. You know, I just was kind of off the mark there. I guess I am a professional. So I learned to say I'm not a licensed makeup artist. A license, um, I spent some time a while back. Thank you, Deetra, for rejoining. I appreciate you. We got Atlanta in the house, y'all. Um, I remember giving one of my first talks on Facebook about knowing the difference between um, your purpose, your skill, um, and your expertise. And during that time, I was really getting people to understand that, um, your purpose is something that is God given. It, it's a part of you. Um, it's a part of you that thank you so much, Miss uh, Muhammad, for letting me know that I've, that I, that I am out here helping and empowering Thank you for your comments. Please continue to comment if, if you feel so moved in your heart. It really helps me th through these live videos. But um, knowing the dif difference between your gift, your purpose, and your skill. Um, a gift is something, it doesn't come with a license, y'all. You may be gifted in service, which means that you can think of ideas of how to serve people in servanthood, and it just clicks. Uh, God just draws people to you. Thank you, Shanita, uh, Shatera, for joining. Hey, um, all the way from uh, D.C. We got Washington, D.C., and we got Atlanta in the house. I am so excited about today's live. Um, your gift is something that is God-given. You don't even have to work on it. It's already favored. You reach out there and you start doing it and, and God draws people to you and you can almost, you do it effortless. So uh, if Mr. Mike Brown is on here, he's an educator by, by practice and employment, but God has given him the gift of voice. That man can sing anything in any key. It's Mr. Mike Brown, um, Dr. Cole, I'm talking about my mentors. She can take a kid that's struggling. In a little bit of time, she can get to know that kid inside and out and place that kid in a different environment by sparking and connecting with that kid's interest. So sometimes uh, Corey Wilson, another pastor, another preacher, another spiritual person, I want to talk about Corey Wilson right quick because... He is one of my spiritual mentors who, while I was working in the classroom, oh, Shatira's in Edmond right now with Miss Jasmine. Hey, thank you all for watching. I'm so glad that you are here. I sure say social distancing stinks today because I would sure be trying to find you, but we'll have to get some FaceTime in while you're here from D.C. for sure. Um, but Corey Wilson talked to me about my spirit at work. 
I was having trouble figuring out why come every time I get a job, I can't keep my mouth shut about what's wrong. Um, I really struggle with that, y'all. You know, why, why come when I get a job, I'll say, well, I'm just going to get this job. I ain't going to say nothing. However they run in the program, the school, or whatever's going on, I'm just not going to say nothing about it. I'm going to get in where I fit in and do what the people tell me to do and don't say nothing. And I was really struggling um, thinking about some things that I saw where some things could change that could um, really empower the work environment that we were in. And I had Corey Wilson, who's a pastor now, spend some time with me in my classroom. And he said to me, the problem you're struggling with, you don't know who you are. And I said, what? What does that mean? He said, you don't know who you are spiritually. You, you got it. You know what you do. But you don't know your role spiritually. So speaking to Corey Wilson, I asked him to elaborate. And he talked to me. And he gave me the, we went to some scripture. But he talked to me about the purpose of the plower in the Old Testament when people had to raise their own crops to eat and plant the crops for which they made a living. And Corey Wilson told me, he said, God designed you to break up tough ter territory, Charmin. And he said to me, he said, I already know what your spiritual purpose is. He says, God designed you to break up tough territory. And he said something so key along my life. He said, you are never going to see oftentimes the output of the work you put on, put in. And he talked to me about back in the day, how a plower had to plow a garden and they only spent their time plowing forward, that they were responsible for making sure tough soil was grounded through. Give me just one second, please. I'm sorry, y'all. When you got kids, life just kind of happens. Thank you for staying with me. That's my son coming in and out. You know those teenagers, they, like I said, they restless, y'all, trying to find something to do during this pandemic. So he is okay. Make sure both doors are shut, son. All right. So you still got to be a mama. Some of you all are going to be doing it all the time, just like me. Come April the 6th, I will be doing parenting, working from home, and everything else in between. But Corey Wilson spoke to me about looking forward and not looking back and never failing to take a leadership position and adding my input if it can help. He worked with me in understanding that I may not see a lot of the soil that I break up because he shared with me once the soil is breaking up, it allows for people behind me to plant seeds. And he said back in the biblical days, once one field was plowed, that's the only job that the plower had was to break up tough soil. He would break up the soil for one family to be able to plant seeds. And his, the soon as he was finished, he only looked back to make sure his lines were straight. Then it was off to the next field to break up so that people could plant seeds that eventually would be able to gather a harvest. And he said to me, he said, you've done such impactful work that oftentimes I go black, back to places that you have worked. And the name Charmin Williams is there with a list of things that you contributed to that school, to that organization, to that unit, to that business. And he helped me to see that God gave me a purpose to facilitate and to help people overcome challenges in any area that I'm in. And he helped to build that confidence in me that said, you may be speaking alone, but please know, we know when Charmin Williams speaks, she's done her research, she's analyzed the situation, and we need you to keep speaking because we trust you. So I say to you, Corey Wilson, thank you. And on that day, I asked Corey Wilson, would he be 
one of my spiritual mentors and he agreed. And I, I know that I said I was doing a live for self-care, but if I can't think back to positive statements, positive empowerment that I've had at this point, then I'm not able to continue forward in uncertainty. So looking back to great moments in your life is a great thing to do right now to not forget who you are in this moment. The world may be changing around us, but you still have the power to be your best self. Thank you, Noel, for saying that you're enjoying. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for joining. Thank you. I have my next educator who is here because this truly, this life has been a mixture of self-empowerment, self-help, um, information for parents who are struggling through this time of uncertainty. Angela is another principal who has given me opportunity after opportunity to uh, walk in my purpose through my employment. Um, long did I want to be an instructional coach where I could take the information that I learned over 20 years um, of educating students, particularly in math and helping them to be their best selves. I had an educator that knew in my heart that for many years, about eight years, that my desire was to be a full-time instructional coach. And I've been talking today, Angela, about this is a great time to give people their flowers while they are here with us and doing well. During the pandemic, it's a great time to give people their flowers. You are my third bouquet for today. I've given Mike Brown his flowers and Dr. Sally Cole. And now I want to present you with your bouquet of um, thankful words. But um, to be able to walk in my purpose every day as an instructional coach, um, teaching other educators um, the best skills, the, 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 the best of what I know from around the country, I have been fortunate to be a part of an education system to return back to an education system that prior to my departure spent about $70,000 sending me across the country from um, uh, Las Vegas to Chicago. I mean, East Coast to West Coast to learn the best of what is happening in education. Thank you, Luciana, for joining. I appreciate you, friend. Um, to help me bring the best of what's happening in education across the world right back here to Oklahoma City. And they allowed me to do that with such ease. Um, I tell people all the time when I'm coaching, when I'm speaking, when people ask me about the impact that you can have on children, I tell people all the time, it's not the amount of time that you have with students. It's what you do with the time that you have. Um, during the time that they were sending me from the East Coast or West Coast, I missed a great deal of school and they would still be amazed at the end of the school year that my students would still outperform um, the state in Algebra 1 with students coming far and below. And a lot of that was because of the practices that I shared with students of how to learn by reading the book, how to read the book, how to go to places in the book for help, um, how to ask questions to help you know exactly what you need, something called mastery teaching, to find out what you need to get better at whatever it is that you're practicing. So I want to say thank you. She was uh, my instructional coach at that time, and she had a huge impact um, on the work that I would do that would change the trajectory of my life of just being a school instructor, a school teacher, to becoming a leader in education. So there are those flowers right there for you, Miss Lewis. Um, thank you, Carla Mukes, for joining. I appreciate you. Um, so there are the eyes. Again, this is a makeup tutorial with self-care. Um, because I don't have anywhere to go, I said I'm going to take my time today and speak what's on my heart. And I'm going to take as long as I need to to put this particular face that I'm doing on. So my eyes are done. That is just a primer for my eyes. Again, um, my eyes were darkening. You can still see it up under that primer from here to here. And it was darkening up under. So for a recap, I know Angela's just joined a few more people. I decided about three days ago to do a mental, spiritual, and physical detox during this time of uncertainty. 
and it started with creating a detox water. There is lemon and ginger that I bring to a boil for 10 minutes, and then I add the cucumber. And it is a great taste. I love the taste of cucumber, so I have cucumbers, and plus cucumbers is actually a detoxifying agent as well. But you can add any kind of berries you want to if you like a sweet um detox water i did a facial and i'm gonna do it again i'm gonna rub my nose i'm gonna rub my forehead and i'm gonna let you see how the light is reflecting because once i started doing the detox my face always follows how my body and my attitude and my mood and my spirit feels so if you're not sleeping enough it's gonna show up in your eyes you're gonna have puffiness i have no puffiness today because I have told you during this uncertainty, you can choose to have high blood pressure and anxiety, or you can choose to have faith and security in knowing God is in control. Um, be anxious for nothing, Philippians 4, 6, and 8. That's what's keeping me right now, allowing me to go to sleep at night during this uncertain time. Hi, Alicia. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate everybody that's joined. You can drop a comment. You can share, like, and love this video. You can do a watch party. I encourage you, if this is helping you, tag somebody and help somebody else. I am out to empower today, to speak love, to speak hope, and speak uplifting through self-care during this time of uncertainty during the uh, pandemic. So, those things are going to show. And my body began to show signs of stress. I am not um, superwoman, although I try to be sometimes doing all the things that I do. But I'm just like anybody else that's uncertain about what's coming. So I decided for myself I would take time to rest because a real rested body is a body that recovers and fights off anything naturally. So I took some time at the beginning to rest. And then I took some time to begin to build my immune system with vitamin C, making sure I go outside as much as I can to get that vitamin D because vitamin D from the sun is a natural uplifter. That's why you wake up when the sun begins to come in through your blinds in the morning. Our body responds to light, which causes our mind to respond to light, which causes our emotions and our feelings to respond um, to light. So, I'm a person. I do real bad in wintertime. It's not my friend. Everybody that knows it knows me. I dye my hair in the loudest shade of pink that I can get it in the wintertime just so I can have color around me to uplift my mood. I don't do well when the sun is removed. So here we are. The eyes are done. I'm giving so many nuggets today. I just wanted to empower and uplift. So with the eyes done, I'm going to do a pink purple shimmer today. And I'm going to start with a base color um because i need a really light base color to go on that's going to be the base of this look so let me check okay yeah that's the look i'm supposed to be using okay so i'm going to start with a base color i do apologize i didn't even think i was going to go on um and do any makeup today so my brushes they pretty clean because i wasn't wearing much makeup right before the um pandemic started and we had to kind of change focus I wasn't wearing much makeup at all. That lets you know right there, Miss Charmin Williams, who always has makeup, I probably was needing to slow down just a little bit. And actually, I did. So, I got a main brush I need. There it goes. All right. So, I'm going to start this with a very light pink because I'm going for a very pretty pink, dark pink look. And I tell you, I'm not a professional makeup artist i'm just a girl who loves makeup oh i was telling you a story um i said hi to some people and forgot what i was saying but i've been wearing makeup <laughs> since i was about 13 i had a mother that was very very much so fashion forward and the most i could wear from the time i was 13 to about 15 she would let me wear her avon cherry jubilee lipstick baby them lips was red let me tell you but she would allow me to wear her cherry jubilee and uh, I remember having some friends in the neighborhood whose parents said, y'all can't play with Charmin no more. She's a, mama letting her wear makeup. And it was my mother who was a big part in, in, in instilling a self-awareness um, in loving who you are. And I remember coming home and saying, well, mama, what does fast mean? Everybody say, I'm just a little fast. I ain't going to lie. As I got old, I did get a little fast, a little too much fast. But we'll talk about that later. Everybody got to pass. But for me... It was a love at first sight with Cherry Jubilee, and I loved what makeup could do. 
And so on the weekends, my mother would allow me to play in her fashion fair, but I couldn't wear it out the house. And if you remember, fashion fair was one of the first makeups that were worn by uh, Patti LaBelle and different people when we really started looking at, at glamour and everyday wear for the everyday woman. So my love for makeup goes all the way back to fashion fair. Um, and that cousin that I was telling you, my cousin Deborah, who's my personal, hi Nicole, there's another diva, thank you for joining me, all the way from Cincinnati, I'm so excited, thank you Jasmine for watching, I'm so excited about this live, I have had everyone from, everywhere from Dallas, Texas today in the house, Atlanta, Georgia in the house, um, Edmond, Oklahoma in the house by way of DC, and now I have Cincinnati, Ohio in the house, so I am really, really excited about today's um, live. So I'm going to go with this pink palette. I'm trying to do a really, I keep kind of looking to the side because I got my face up. What I want to look at is over on another computer screen. But I really wanted to do a really beautiful pink color because I'm home today and I'm going to be cleaning up. I started out this morning spring cleaning and I said, you know, the best thing you can do for self-care is not to get too far away from who you are. And makeup is a part of who I am. And so I said, well, I guess I just want to get gorgeous today to clean up the house. But it's not really to clean up the house. It's more of a mood uplifter. So for me, makeup is self-care. Because anything that makes you feel good about who you are, that's a self-care practice. So I've spoke about the long, hot baths for me personally. Makeup is self-care for me. I have spoken about gardening is self-care for me. Speaking with people and uplifting people and helping people is also self-care for me. So during this time of uncertainty, uh, Jay Wiggins may be off right now, but he was on a little bit earlier. Um, our arts people, people of the arts, they are really finding a way to keep us um in, in touch during this time of uncertainty and time of social distancing. This week I got to experience an art, an online digital art gallery through Facebook where Jay uploaded a picture a day as long as we were engaged. And I really did appreciate, appreciate that. There are some people that paint. They're painting every day um, for those people who love to see artwork uh, begin and come to an end. There are people out there that are, go outside. I mean, I've been outside more during this pandemic than I've been in years. Um, my my street was flooded the other day. Although we practice social distancing, I seen more people out enjoying nature. When you go outside in your front yard, you if you're anywhere that's not a big city, you are still enjoying nature. I happen to live somewhat in a kind of country, kind of rural. It's kind of like mixed, really close to the city. But I've enjoyed um, an Oklahoma downpour about, I think last week it rained a lot. And it was a long time since I enjoyed an Oklahoma downpour during the month of March. Because in Oklahoma, March can mean very many things. March can mean the beginning of spring. March can mean the end of winter. But it also can mean the beginning of the tornado season for us, okay? So March and April are tricky months for us in Oklahoma. But I remember thinking and sharing with some people, it was the first time I could enjoy an Oklahoma downpour because usually when it rains and it's really cold in Oklahoma, the first thing your mind starts worrying about, is it going to be cold enough to freeze? Then after you start thinking it's going to be cold enough to freeze, am I going to be able to make it to work on time tomorrow and get the kids to school tomorrow? Then you start worrying about it's going to get colder during the day or warmer during the day because then it might freeze and it might be worse coming home than it was before. So all of that builds to our daily anxiety. And as I sat on my front porch and I watched the rain come down and I heard the rain coming down, I said to myself, how long has it been that I can enjoy an Oklahoma downpour in cool weather in March without anxiety? So many things that we have been um, detached from because we've been living in such a fast pace, a societal, a society pace to make sure everything gets done. Thank you, Nicole. She said, it's taking us back to the days when we sat on the porch every day. People play cards, the kids playing in clothes lines, etc. Yeah, I was driving with my mom the other day, and I remember what Saturday used to mean 
For me, Saturday used to mean getting in the car about 11 o'clock on a Saturday day with my mom, driving from Spencer, Oklahoma to Oklahoma City to the east side and sitting on my aunt's front porch to get my hair pressed every Saturday like clockwork. But could you imagine the unity that family had, families had? Thank you, Michael, for joining. That families had back in the day when there was less things to capture our attention. You went to your auntie's house and sat on the porch and got your hair Press or you got it pressed next to the stove in the kitchen, and then you played with your cousins when you got outside. And somebody kept telling you, Don't get your don't mess up your hair, you got to go to church in the morning. So, it's so many things that the pandemic can take you back to very fond memories. It does not, I keep saying through self care, this doesn't have to be a time where your blood pressure shoots, it can actually be a time where you can give yourself some grace for not knowing what's coming next. Um, you can even give yourself some financial grace. I've shared earlier, I have more people that's joining, so I'm going to continue to kind of go back and piggyback. For as long as I can remember working and having a mortgage and having a car payment, every day was mindful that if I don't get up and go to work, I won't have a home, I won't have a car, I won't have utilities. I had somebody that was a little worried that called me the other day about did I have a, an ideal of how long this would, this would last? And I said to them, I don't have any, this is one time I don't have a clue. But what I do know is that it's the first time for Sharman Williams in a long time. I ain't had to worry about if I could pay my mortgage. I ain't had to worry about that car that's sitting out there. I have not had to worry about gas, electric, and some water. Because usually that's my responsibility. And if I don't get it done for my family, we don't have it. It's not a time to celebrate, but if you give yourself some grace and learn to look at things that are in your control and the grace that is happening a little bit through the federal government, that we know of, we've been told, as Americans, the government is going to work to make sure your house is not taken during this time. The government is going to work to make sure no utilities are cut off during this time. I've had only one person to say that they, you know, the person that has the, the, the note on their car note was not as gracious. But I told that person, just give it a little time. Because right now, people are going to hold on to their money really for necessities. It's just the human thing to do. Give it a little time. Who are they going to sell the car to? So it's one time that I want to tell you to do this right here. Take a calm and breath. I do have on my core meditations t-shirt today for a reason, y'all. Take another breath with me, if you will. A deep inhale. And just hold it. And let it go. It slows everything down in your body for just a few minutes. That calming breath allows your body to readjust at any time. It's the beginning of what we do when we want to go into um, meditation. I'm going to show you one more technique since I'm teaching today. Um, it's called dropping the breath. I talked about detoxing. I have my detox water, detox water, my lemon, my ginger, and my cucumber. I talked about detoxing with my facial. You can see my face is still shining in some places. It's coming. That detox is working. But another thing that I really did when I did my meditation after I did my facial is I did a practice called dropping the breath. And it's when you breathe in, you breathe in with a deep inhale and you want to feel, um, you want to focus mentally on this part right above your, your mouth. I know we're not supposed to be touching our face, but if you're at home, please go wash hands and come back so you can touch your face. I've already done that. I got wipes, hand sanitizer and everything else around, but when you drop the breath, you want to focus on feeling energy come out of your body that's pent up. So I'm going to do it for you right quick. It's called dropping the breath. You breathe in deeply. You hold it and you drop the breath really forcefully. <sighs> and dropping the breath has been proven to allow toxins that's in the body to actually come out through that breath. And it, and it calms the inner workings of your mind and it calms your environment. Thank you, Janice, for watching. I'm here, girl. I'm teaching, doing makeup, doing everything to help people calm down during the pandemic. So 
those are even some breathing techniques that you can do during this time to do self-care. So I have been meditating. I have been doing spring cleaning. I finished up a, a doctoral graduate course while we have been off. I had time to make sure I proofread and read all the research I was supposed to read. And I'm going to say again, um, I've also had time to support our local um, women's empowerment movement. So I have been spending time with Ryan Blair Smith, Fear Less, Do More. Um, a great book to read during this time in focusing on doing everything that you can do that maybe you didn't have time to do before and really empowering yourself during this time. I have my favorite girl on, on deck, honey. She's on deck, Ayana Van Zandt. Uh, Ayana Van Zandt. Um, I have shared this book this week, particular passages out of this book, Faith in the Valley, okay? And what do you do in the meantime? Um, how to break the destructive patterns you have in your own life, how to have, come, overcome childhood dysfunctions, and how to really become your best self working with yourself. When Ayana Van Zandt says, do your work, she's talking about the work out of this book on yourself, y'all. So I have my, my um, resources around me. This self-help thing is real. Um, anxiety, Anxious for Nothing, uh, Max Lucardo. I have that book. I have began reading. I'm about right here. You can literally see that my book is withered. I read in the bathtub, y'all. I promise you that's my favorite self-care place. And then I have a favorite book, which is Tapping the Power Within. So you can utilize this time to become um, a more inward understanding person, understanding your own spirit, understanding your own drives, understanding your own positive and negative patterns that you have that live within you. This is a great time for doing that. So I think that I have uh, this light pink on as, as best that it's going to get. I am taking time. I don't, you can log out and log back in if you're only, only interested in the makeup because I'm doing a lot of things today as I try to do my part in social distancing, staying home and doing what I can do to help those that are connected to me during this time of uncertainty. Um, it's, it's very much so needed, you all. It's very much so you need needed taking care of yourself during this time. So now that I've done that, I'm now going to go in and build the rest of this eye that I'm working with. So the next color that I need is... Oh, that light pink was um, from a product called Sante. Um, and it is a set of kind of shimmer eyeshadows is Sante Ultimate Pearl Eyeshadow and I was using this pink right here. This pink right here is what I was using. That's that light really pretty kind of um, baby pink that I was using there. And this pink you all are, is going to stand out. It's setting the tone for this look that I'm going for. Never have done this look before um, but I wanted a look that would uplift me today. Okay, so then I'm going to go in with my second color. Let me just test and make sure I got the right color that I want to go in with. Yep, that's the color. So now I have another um, shadow kit, and it is um, NK product um, called Sugar Plum, NK Makeup, and it's called Sugar Plum. And I'm going to apply this first pink right here. It's going to go into my crease and I'm going to create um, a crease palette and you'll see it when I get ready. Some people actually go in and do something called cutting the crease. I am not a cut the crease girl. Life in the Gold was designed um, for you to be able to do your makeup in about 20 minutes. Life in the Gold, um, Blessings Business and Beauty. It was designed for you to be able to do your makeup in about 20 minutes. I absolutely love makeup because I love makeup. And so for me, makeup helps me to feel better and to do better and to enjoy life a little bit more. So I don't cut the crease. I just wing it, y'all. I'm not a professional makeup artist. Again, I'm just an experienced 
male makeup artist, not a licensed makeup artist, just an experienced um, makeup artist. And what I'm trying to create, I call it a halo. It's going to be a halo effect because I'm going to do some blending in between that crease as I bring it down. So uh, it might not look like much now. It might just look like a rainbow. That's what I'm trying to get is that rainbow effect. Because I'm going to go in and blend deeper in that rainbow. But right now I just needed to create this kind of crease effect here. Because I'm going to play around with that crease effect in just a minute. So, I don't have music playing today because I found that I obviously didn't do a very good job of posting about the Facebook post you made when it say, I do not own the rights to this music. I tried to do that. And Facebook was like, I don't care. You're not going to have any of the rights to this music at all. And you don't own them and you're not going to play them. So, I decided that today there was enough information for me to share and my voice really needed to be heard that I was going to not have the make the the music playing in the background anymore. So as I am creating this halo effect, really focusing right here because we're gonna go in and deepen the rest of our halo. I'm kind of focusing right through here. Okay. Now, I tell people all the time, it's just makeup. So when you find that you've gone too far, something got too dark, it's not quite like you want it, it's just makeup. Go right back over that. And I will go and blend that out in just a minute. So now that I've got, I'm still not too happy with this crease over here. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for joining I am doing self-care. Makeup is one of my joy zones. So I am sharing knowledge about how to stay uplifted during the pandemic uh, coronavirus that we're facing, facing as a nation. Um, we've never been here before, y'all. So it's going to take a lot of making sure that you're mentally prepared, physically prepared, and spiritually prepared to do the things that we're going to need to do. Even if what we need to do is simply stay home so that we save lives, it, you're going to need to be your best self to um, go through this pandemic. So I have held off on sharing for a while because I wanted to make sure when I began to share that I was sharing information that I was for sure about and I was sharing information to help you get through this time. All right, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a deeper color of pink um, a right in the crease. And I'm still working with the same palette, this NY um, Sugar Plum palette. And I think now is the time that I'm going to go in with this pink down here, this color down here. And I'm going to go in with that color because... I'm going to be trying to darkening this area through here to set it apart from the crease and the pink up top. And hopefully you'll be able to see that when I go in with this color. And I keep looking to the side because again. So I'm going to go in with a deeper pink. Just on the end of that halo. Oh yeah, I can definitely see it. And we're going to clean it up all later, y'all. So don't worry about when you try this at home, if your makeup kind of goes everywhere. I use Neutrogena Makeup Wipes. It goes in and catches all of the, the, um, the powder from the eyeshadow as you're trying to create this unique look. And so the goal... Oh, uh, thank you so much, Miss Muhammad, um, for joining us. Thank you that this has been uplifting. I appreciate you. Miss Muhammad is with the Teachers Appreciation Foundation, and she is again one of the most fabulous ladies I know. The first time I every time I see her, I can't wait to get a hug. She wears the most beautiful um African garments that you've ever seen and her spirit is a guiding light wherever she goes. So that's my fourth bouquet for today. Thank you so much Miss Muhammad for joining. You are definitely one of the people that I can't wait to see 
um, when I step into the room. So thank you for all that you do on behalf of teachers through the Teachers Appreciation Foundation and your smile and your love that you share wherever you go. Thank you so much for that. So that is Miss Muhammad who says she has to go. If you have to leave, you can come in and you can come at, back out and you can come and pick up the live um, a little bit later. You can come in and out. I was determined that I was going to get this look done today. So I knew that I would be here on here a little bit longer than normal today. So I'm going to go in. Okay, so I can see where this is like a little fiery. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for joining me back. Thank you. Thank you. Moni Brown Tuggle, I will be sending out a little bit later this week. Uh, thank you and appreciation for my top followers for everything that I do. Um, it helps when you have the motivation from others that let you know that you're positively creating an impact in their life. So right now, I'm so happy back to back. I have two of my top followers in the room. I want to recognize you all. That's going to be Moni Brown Tuggle, who always sends me a positive comment when I post pictures, when I post content. Whatever it is, and Miss Stacy Cox, um, cousin, uh, all the way from Louisiana, is always there to give me a positive word to let me know that she appreciates the things that I share. So um, thank you to two of my top fans who are joining me right now. And it doesn't matter with those two, whether it's makeup, whether it's um, a word for the day or whatever it is, they always let me know that um, they appreciate me being um, on air. So, that is part of the look. Now, this look is a little bit tricky because this look kind of calls for you to um, blend a little bit of a kind of a shimmery gold into this look. So, and then it goes to a really deepened look around the edges. So, I'm now going to go to Over the Counter Cover Girl, right? And this kit is a quad palette and the name of it is... 720 blooming blushes and i'm gonna go and i don't even know what this kind of color this is y'all but i'm gonna go in here and um thank you stacy says she's always here for me i appreciate that right up under this this uh baby pink is this kind of metallic uh gold rose color so i'm gonna take that gold rose color and i'm gonna try to place that like right through here and that's where i'm trying to go with this color right here so it's going to kind of break up the color a little bit. And because the way the color is, oh, it's pretty too, y'all. Oh, look at that. I'm going to pat it on. I'm going to take my brush and break it up in the palette. And I'm actually going to pat it in place so that it fans out. Oh, that's gorgeous. I do like it. I do like it. Okay. So I'm going to spend some time patting that one on. And it is a transition, so you want it to get from like a light, um, a light coat to like a dark coat so that it gets more intense the more you look at the eye from here to here. So sometimes blending these colors together, th this is what can take time. I'm talking and working, but I promise you this is about a 20 minute go um, in the morning. About a 20 minute go in the morning. If it takes more than 20 minutes, I'm not going to have it on because I'm a late bloom. I shared with you earlier. Oh, yeah. During this time of self-care, go to the Internet and check out something called Chronotype. C-H-R-O-N-O, -O, Chrono, and then your type, Chronotype. Just go to Google and Google Chronotype. Chronotype is going to let you know when you're most active. And it will if you go through the whole chronotype self-assessment online it will give you information to confirm that there's millions of people just like you out there that have the same sleep pattern so i shared earlier i get up early and go to work because i have to because that's the way the society is but if i was in my natural state y'all i would work from 11 um a.m to 11 p.m that's when i'm most productive in the in the late afternoon till late at night, and then I'm also a night owl. So if I get up at 11, if I can get up at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, then I can stay up till about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and my, my average time that I would prefer to sleep on any given day would be from um, 2 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock the next day. So 2 o'clock a.m. to 10 p.m. In the society that we live in, though, we don't get to 
traditionally have choices like that, particularly in education. So most people that work with me every day know I come to work um, every day, but my most productive, natural productive time begins after 10, after 10 o'clock. So let me get a little bit of this water here. My detox water, that is. Um, I do uh, housekeeping things for myself between um, 7.30 and 10 o'clock is usually my time to check emails. It's my time to think about how productive I want to be during the day. Um, if there's any kind of report that I need to fill out, if I have to go back and do a, a time tracker, if I need to go back and do teacher files or something like that, um, from 7 to 10 is a good time for me to do that because my best active time begins after 10 o'clock. When I go to trainings that start traditionally at 8 o'clock in the morning, I have to make sure <laughs> that I have a jump start ready to go along the day. My jump start is caffeine, cola. So I usually have a Coke, sometimes coffee. But I'm also a single mother. And because I'm not, excuse me, the person that eagerly gets up in the morning, like some people are natural early birds, I wish. I'm just not. So what happens for me is it's a battle between me and my alarm clock every single morning. Then there's a battle between me and my kids um, every single morning to then make sure we get out of the house on time for me to get them to school on time and for me to get across town to actually go to work. So um, for me... My ideal time for engagement, and I'm most alert, from 11 to 11. So when we talk about self-care during this pandemic, I thought about this for two weeks. Now. I will have a total of two weeks and one day that I've had the ability to be my most productive self according to my own natural sleep and work pattern which means that I've been sleeping late and I get up about 10 and I can get so many things done. Um, I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and you've probably seen a lot of uh, messages and a lot of feeds talking about if you are a self-employed person and you create content or you create products or you create, you write books. This is one of the best times. This is one of the pluses out of the pandemic is that if you have the ability to be at home and you're not one of the essential people out on the front lines, you actually have unextended, unlimited time to think about a concept and think it all the way through and lay it all the way out. I'm a full-time employee through education and a serial entrepreneur part-time and on the weekends and the evenings and weekends. So really what happens to me is ideas come to me during the day. I have to keep them right here in my memory bank on days that I'm highly productive, but I'm actually on the clock for, for the position that I have during the day, my lunchtime is the time that I'm trying to eat and write down, you know, any little ideas that may come to me. And I can only work on those ideas outside of my full-time job. Now, some people will say, uh, and I do believe that is true, is that if you would just make the jump to full-time entrepreneurship, you wouldn't have that struggle. I want to say to people, everybody know when they need to jump. Don't listen to everybody telling you you're not uh, a certified small business if you're not doing it 100% full time. Most people who begin a small business need some kind of safety net. Um, rarely do you come right out of college and say, oh, I'm going to start a small business and be successful. It's usually some passion that develops, some niche that you find in the market that you're really, really good at. And everybody has to go through that balancing stage. So, you know, life in the go, I talk about um, blessings beauty and business. So when we look at that um, in life in the go, you have to think about when is a good time for you to jump. You need to build the nest egg. You need to make sure that you're able to pay for your own personal insurance. So there's a lot of things that go into becoming a full-time small business owner. But I want to tell all those people that are still managing, that are putting in hours on the clock, where you kind of start doing your small business efforts after you work an eight to five job, keep doing it. You okay. And your blessings and your favor will come. If so, it's your desire 
to, oh, girl, I can really see it coming out now. Tell me, oh, girl, like it's somebody in the room. I got to talk to somebody because uh, social distancing, it ain't nobody here but me. So, oh, girl, I'm talking to all the girls on the Facebook. Oh, girl, look at that. It's coming together. I can really start to see that, that uh, especially on this eye, I can really start to see the definition of this um I don't know if this is a rose. So I'm going to call it rose gold, y'all. I can really start to see this rose gold setting in. I ain't going to spend too much more time on it. But um, kudos to you. Keep doing it. In time, everything that you desire, it will come. And I'm a little bit different because I happen to be um, a part-time small business owner because I'm actu actually doing the love of my life during the day when I'm working, helping other teachers. Um, my full-time job already is a big part of both my gift and my passion. So everybody staying at home full-time, that's not for everybody all the time. So definitely keep it in mind, but don't, don't, don't compare yourself and don't feel like you just got to rush off and be this successful full-time, small-time business owner all at once. Okay, I kind of like doing a little bit from here too. Okay, so I'm kind of liking the way that this look. I have not blended yet, so it may look a little bit funny because I have not blended yet. But I see some purple that's coming through over here that I don't see as much over here. So I'm going to go back to that deep color that I had. And I'm going to touch that up there. Yep, there it go too. Yep. So I'm just going to touch that up. And we're going to clean all of this up and blend it out in just a minute, y'all. But there is a color pattern that um, that I had going. Okay. Uh, extend that just a little bit more. Now, the last thing that we're going to do before we blend all of this together is we want to put a little bit dark smudge. And that smudge, I'm going to see if I can... Tap it out for you so you can see it. We're going to put a smudge color kind of like right in here, like a little triangle, if you will, right in here to set this tone off. And to do that, I'm not going to go with a, a black color. There's a deep purple that's set off in this um, palette of the NK Sugar Plum. And I'm going to use that deep purple to create the edge and right off in here. Can you see how deep that got right through there? I might have to use a little bit more. It might take us a minute. And I'm just making like a little triangle. Because I'm only trying to set that deep color right in that little triangle. So this is kind of a smoky, purple smoky eye, if you will. And I'm kind of just using my brush kind of like a... Like a crayon, y'all. Bam! I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. And uh, we're going to clean it up afterwards, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to keep working on this little smoky eye corner here. Mm -mm. And I like just that. So, <laughs> left is going to be a little bit harder. My left is always harder for me to do, y'all, than my right. But... We're going to do our best. Nobody's going to know the difference when we blend it all out. So with makeup, I always say, don't worry about it because it is a situation where you can always start over. And I tell people all the time, it's just makeup. It comes off. It's not like a tattoo. You get a tattoo you don't like, you stuck with it till you go through the expensive and the hurting part of getting that tattoo removed. But with makeup... Have a new tattoo every day. Just makeup. Okay, so this is the last thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to work my best to get this little triangle over here. As you can see, my angling is not as good on that side. Because I'm right-handed. All right. But I still want to fan this out a little bit more. The best that I can. There we go. Got to work with it a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a blending brush. 
so that I don't look like a clown because it could look kind of clownish right now. I'm going to take just a blending brush and I'm going to blend everything together so that there are no hard lines. And I'm using a paper towel to go back through and clean my brush every time because we want it to be like a faded look. And I'm trying real hard just not to hit the gold, y'all. But we want it to be like a faded look. We want the colors to fade into one another. So I am just moving my bend, blending brush in a circular mat in a circular pattern. Okay. And you can see the colors are not bleeding. You can still see that pretty pink that we put on if you use your blending brush and you you can see that every time I pick up makeup, I'm taking some of it off. You'll be fine. Now. Okay. So now, as I said, I don't worry about uh, my makeup falling off because I keep little Neutrogena wipes. I'm going to get a fresh one because that one's gotten a little dry. Get a fresh Neutrogena wipe. And I just take it and I fold it. And I take my hand and make an edger. And I edge. So I can really see what that makeup's going to look like. And you can see what I picked up here. Okay. So now it's not everywhere. It's not everywhere. All on the edge. I create my own edge. I just draw that in. And then I can see what my makeup is really going to look like. Because you might feel like you look like a clown when you're trying to blend so many colors. And I create my edge. So traditionally... And you can pick up any fallout is what it's called up under your eye too. If you have any fallout up under. Okay, so now that that's kind of set, I'm going to do just a little bit more blending. I want to do some more blending right through here. Because I really want you to see that fade into that dark. And then I'm going to take that light pink that we used early in the process on a fresh brush and... Tap it up there so that you can see. For me, that is that is my little personal signature. Whether I'm wearing a neutral brown or I'm wearing a gold or I'm wearing a pink or a rose, I always have that edger up there that goes up to the edge. So when I first put on that primer, and I told you it's going to be important at the end to have that brown primer, that primer is now picking up that um, very light baby pink up at the top. Okay. Hi, I've had Angela Moore to join. Thank you. Hey, Sissy. Hey, Tammy Burton. Thanks for joining. I'm doing self-care, girl, during this pandemic. I want to say thank you to my sister-in-law, um, Tammy Burton, who um, works to manage part of the staff that is responsible um, for cleaning and sanitation of one of our local, very successful, uh, well-known hospitals in Oklahoma City. I want to say thank you. I have focused on today on giving people their flowers while they are here, while we are in this uh, pandemic. And I just want to say thank you to her because she posted the other day that while many of us are at home trying to figure it out, um, her staff is vital in making sure that every um, room, whether occupied or not occupied at the time, is clean, that is hot. Ebony, thanks for joining, um, that is sanitized. They have the tough job of going in um, after patients with corona to make sure that those hospital rooms are re-sanitized um, to make sure that the environment that the nurses and the doctors and that patients have to go into, that that environment is clean, disinfected, and safe. Um, I pray for you, Tammy, my sister, every day. It's my sister-in-law. I pray for her and her staff. Every single day that we are on the front line facing this coronavirus, this pandemic. So today I'm just online mixing two of my favorite things, which is um, women's empowerment. Um, today is people's empowerment because men and women, boys and girls are living through um, this pandemic. And a lot of times I speak often. Um, whether I'm part of a panel, whether I'm actually speaking, whether I'm writing curriculum in my part time for other people that have small business um, events. And I've had so many phone calls to ask me, what do I think? Because I'm also known for being a forward thinker. 
I'm known for being that calm in the storm, that voice. So I've had many people to call and I did not intentionally go live during this um, time of national crisis until I myself was certain that I had in place my self-care and all those things I needed to do to make sure that I could see through this pandemic along with um, my family. So um, thank you for joining. Tammy is also one of the people that I was 13 years old with when I put on that Cherry Jubilee, y'all. That is my sister, sister, um, for real, and I love her so much. She is so much a part of the person whom I have become, whether it be fashion or or uh, hair or makeup. She was one of my first fas uh, fashionistas that I had the time to um, spend a lot of time going up with. So that's my fifth bouquet of roses of words for the day. Um, thank you, Tammy, for all you've done in, in my life from a small child all the way up to now. Hello, Andre D. Coleman. Thank you for joining another person who is responsible for um, looking at how we're going to handle this uh, pandemic with our students going back into the classroom um, through distance learning here pretty soon. So thank you for joining. Also one of the um, best chefs in OKC. So just keep that in mind if you still need um, some food. There are probably still people out there who are trying to keep their small businesses going by doing um, catering um, as they go through. Uh, Chanel says she's watching through her mother's phone. Well, Chanel, can you please give her that bouquet of roses and replay this for her later? But thank you, Chanel. Thank you for letting me know who's on, who's watching. Uh, that lets me know um, who I'm impacting, who I'm sharing with, and all of those sorts of things. Again, self-care is so important. I am drinking my lemon ginger um, water where you take a lemon, roll it, cut it in half. Put it, uh, squeeze it, put it in about a gallon of water in a big stock pot, boil that in ginger slices, and you will get a natural detox. I wanted to detox as I began to see the stress of dealing with this pandemic show up on my face. You can't see it now because I have on makeup. If you go back a little bit further before the makeup, you will begin to see where my eyes have begun to darken at the creases and right up under. Few days of detox water and a home facial. That is gone and my complexion is beginning to shine again. As I, as someone else has said, we're going to have to adjust and readjust, readjust often during this time of crisis. So thank you everybody for joining. I am just trying to do what I love doing my joy zone, which is to do live makeup um, as well as give some words of um, empowerment and support and uplifting as we all try to figure out how we can continue to love on each other, how we can continue to support each other, and how we can continue to all move forward in such a time of uncertainty. So now that that part of my eyes are done, uh, I'm going to try a little trick here. I have something called Radiant Liquid Eyeshadow, and it is a liquid. So where I was trying to really get that shimmer, I'm not really seeing that shimmer as heavy as I want to on the eyelid. So this is actually a liquid makeup, you all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more shimmer for myself using this, this liquid makeup here. And what I'm going to literally do is go in real lightly. I don't know if you all can see that. Real lightly where I was putting that rose gold. I'm going to add a little bit more help to that rose gold to get that shimmer that I was seeing that I want. And so pretty soon when it dries, you'll be able to see the difference between that little area. Hopefully you can already see it. I'll sit here a minute with my eyes closed while this little piece dries. But I wanted to really capture that shimmer. Um, that's just a little trick. You can take liquid shimmer. Um, if you're looking at um, magazine footage, or you're looking at professional print of a makeup style and something seems to really shimmer really strongly and you can't seem to get that with your eyeshadow, they may be actually using a liquid shimmer, you all. So I'm going to do the same thing, kind of creating a little oval of liquid shimmer there. And again, I'm not a person that got time to be cutting no crease. As you see, because I'm not a professional makeup artist. Oh, 
By the way, Miss Chanel that's on the joining us through her mom's uh, cell phone is a professional hairstylist, um, makeup artist. Chanel has done my makeup before. She does a gorgeous job. Um, she gave me a beautiful green look when I went to a live concert one time. I can't remember which concert. But uh, she's amazing with hair color and natural hair looks as well as anything else that you want. You want it, she can do it. So that's my girl. Um, she's another positive light. I talk, I talk a lot when I talk to people about creating a lifestyle that's juvenile. I talk a lot about um, keeping people who are positive around you at all times. And uh, she's another person that the minute that I see her walking through the door, I cannot wait to go find Chanel and uh, give Chanel her hug because her energy always rubs up on me. So as you can see, you can see where here it got a little bit. I'm going to try to make this a little crease so it looks like it's folding. And I may have to still go back in there, you all, because it's still going to have to be blended. But that is that little trick that you see sometimes on the on the um, makeup on the cover. Um, and you see where it looks iridescent. And you try to go home and you try to create the same color. They may not tell you, but they've added a few more little beauty products to get a high shimmer. A high shimmer is really hard to get with, um, with shadow. It's just hard to get sometimes. So I'm going to let this dry because it is a liquid. And it does have to dry. Um... Thank you so much. Thank you, Chanel, for letting me know that I am I am impacting. Um, thank you, Ryan, for uh, rejoining us. Ryan, I just shared your book um, again. If you don't mind, if you can, Ryan, I'm going to share Ryan's book again. She has a wonderful book um, and, and does this uh, does what's called the dream print once or twice a year. I'm not sure. I think it's twice a year. But this is Ryan Blair Smith's book, uh, Fear Less and Do More. And I really do think that it's an awesome book to have during this time of a pandemic if you want to just discover more about yourself and how you can make your own dreams come alive by doing more during this time that we have set aside that has not been um, your time that's set aside. Even as people get ready to actually go to this online uh, work at home, this is a national transition and it's a transition for most companies who never dream that they would have to do 100% of their business you're absolutely welcome Ryan if you don't mind can you share your website in the comments for people who may be interested if you're able if you have copies on hand if you're able to put um uh if you're able to ship out right now if somebody's interested in purchasing um that book if you can, put it in the comments or let them know how they can get their hands on that book. One of the things that, thank you, Anthony, for tuning in for the love, Anthony McDonald. Um, we have uh, one of my Southern University, that is my alumni partner uh, from Southern University. I think um, Anthony may be in Dallas right now. But I am proud to say that on this live feed, I have had participation from Atlanta, Georgia, um, uh, Washington, D.C. by way of Edmond, Oklahoma. One of my, my, my dear friends is here in Oklahoma City right now, but she's now residing in um, Washington, D.C. Uh, we've had Atlanta, Georgia. We have Louisiana in the house. So I have been so blessed. One of the things that we've been talking about, I, I've mentioned it before, that you were here, those that are serious about entrepreneurship and, ex and getting exposure for their businesses, this is the best time for you to be in contact with your following because never in history have we had have I known that we've had a time where everybody everybody's been told to stay at home even if you're working from home Saturday is a great day to release business content of course I told you earlier I couldn't get my life in the go uh, business blessings business and, and beauty and business going but I did want to say to you Saturday is going to be your best day going forward because because everybody Saturday is no different than a Monday right now because the only people that can be out that's supposed to be out right now in this specific time is essential workers so where you used to have the 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 work out of the home work population not at home with social media at their fingertips we used to say that was a Saturday thing where, where most 
where most companies work in America, primarily their primary days are Monday through Friday. Now, Saturday is no different than Monday. You have seven days of the week right now to connect and to build your following. So today, even for me, it's been, a, it been amazing that I've had so many people from Atlanta, from Dallas, Texas, from Louisiana, from Washington, D.C., all to join in on two lives. And I've only done two. And I know I want to thank you, Ryan Blair and, and Sonny Pouncil of uh, uh, Your Unique Home and, and Neighborhood Jams and Nicole LaShonda of Simply Rights Events Planning. We've been in constant communication about how to help uh, small business owners in Oklahoma City and around the glo a globe stay impactful and continue to generate revenue during this time of the pandemic when they're saying everybody stay home. Stay home doesn't mean dis disconnected. I shared earlier on one of my posts, I said, thank God social media was miles ahead um, than social distancing because we're still able to stay connected, stay connected, stay engaged. For me, I held off. I, I knew that starting on Monday will mean something different for me because education goes live through um, distance learning for Oklahoma City schools, Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma, on April the 6th. So I know Monday will begin my thinking cap of producing information and pulling together information that I can share for my teachers that have to have a virtual classroom. Every student they see will be through a virtual situation if possible. We have been sharing links to um, organizations and companies that are, are supporting and give, making sure every student uh, that's in Oklahoma has access to Wi-Fi. Thank God that we have a federal government right now that's saying do not cut off any utilities. Um, we need those utilities because if you don't have a way to charge cell phones, a way to charge tablets, it doesn't matter if you have Wi-Fi if you don't have energy. So, so many of our students come from um, homes, and I, I'm not afraid to say the word. We have some students that come from lower middle class. We have some students that come truly out of homes of poverty that don't have the same accessibility as others. So, you know, I've been educating all during this, all during this, this makeup uh, tutorial, but some, some, some parents um, have been a little antsy. Why have they not had education up until this point? Why are my teachers not on doing everything that they can? From a public school standpoint, we have to remember that equity is a huge part of what we do. We don't want to create unfair advantages for anybody to learn right now. We have to be mindful of every child from every social economic background that we serve as educators. So it's great if you're getting knowledge, but a lot of our attention, we have to focus on what are we going to do for the children who only had that access when they were at in a school building. So those are things that we are working on. I did ask Ryan to share how you could get a copy of her book. She has shared that. Right now, the best way is to inbox her. Um, she has books on hand, and Amazon may take a while. So thank you, Ryan, for doing that. We have an initiative that's been going on for a while. That is the I Support Her. So as you see posts, you know, I've seen posts, continue to support your barber if you're able to, thank you, somebody put no child left behind. Yes, we're responsible as education institutions to make sure we don't leave anybody's child behind, even in a pandemic. So it takes a while to go from providing everything a student needs in a physical setting and being having the summer to prepare for that every year to instantly saying a 360, everything that you've done before is going to change. There's a time preparation that comes from that. So, parents, please be mindful. Um, again, Ryan, thank you for sharing. We've been doing the I Support Her movement where if you know of a um, small business owner, we want to make sure that we continue as best as we can to support them in their efforts because they still have bills, although they may not have the ability to provide their services to their particular clients, particularly those people who hosted empowerment events, um, events that had to be live where they were teaching or they were training you in something. We know that there's very many things that you can do online, 
but there is nothing like a women's empowerment movement or an event where you get to physically go into a space where you're in a space of power to the 100s of positive environment, of positive brothers and sisters, of positive friends, of uh, even church, going into your church home. Um, we go to church, those of us that have a Christian faith, a biblical faith, or whatever your faith may be, you go to unite with others that believe the same thing that you believe. This is a trying time because we have to find a way to practice our beliefs that we have. We have to find a way to continue to um, do our jobs. If our employment has gone to work from home, we have to find a way to now homeschool our children on a mass platform at home, which is something that America as a whole has not been asked to do ever that I know of prior to K-12 public education. So I really want to come in today and do this Facebook Live to do self-care but to just have a conversation that everybody has been prompting me to have, to be the voice of influence, to be the voice of calm through core meditations, um, to just come out and spend some time with you all in a positive environment with all that's going on. I'm going to put a little bit more of this on because it's just so pretty to me and it's just really working out really well. And... Uh, <clears throat> When I put this second coat on, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to go in and do some blending along the eye. And then we're going to go ahead and put some foundation on and move to the final stages of this look. Um, this left eye is not, and it might be just the way the light is reflecting, that I can't see it as well. Or it feels more muddled than the other eye. So I'm trying to really angle that. Okay, I could go in and fix it with the shadow so when this dries we're gonna move on and uh continue to work wendy there's my sis who is on the front lines i had um not pulled my comments down thank you so much wendy tate for joining us she is uh i want to here's my sixth bouquet for the day uh, a flower of words a bouquet of words thank you wendy tate for all that you do she is uh over a nursing unit so she has the huge responsibility right now of um, keeping her nurses um, medically on track to service an influx of people who may be coming in with the coronavirus as well as continue to serve those who she's been serving. I, right now, I can't remember if it is a uh, nursing home setting or a hospital setting, but I do know she is a uh, charge nurse. She's a, a manager of nurses. So I want to say to you, thank you. She did post. She wanna go home. She does not have that ability to go home. So we want to say thank you to Miss Wendy for what she does. Okay. Um, so there's that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just clean that up. I'm going to go in and just clean that up a little bit all around so that it looks uh, as clean as I want it to look. And where's my palette at? So I'm going to go back in with the Sugar Plum NK palette and I'm going to go in with that palette and I'm going to go in and um, clean that up just a little bit. I'm going to go back in with the colors that I used earlier. And as you can see, it flows really pretty over... Um, that liquid makeup, you just go in there and clean it up. And I sure all the time, calm down, it's just makeup. You can fix anything that you don't like. So I'm using this color right here in that palette to just recreate that crease. Because I didn't do a cut crease, I do do makeup that's intended for um, 20 minutes. I've, I'm not a professional makeup artist, and it is not intended to be... Um, to take a long time. Then I'm going to take a blender and I'm going to blend back in a little bit of this pink down here. I'll blend back in a little of this pink so that there is a breaking point from the uh, gold there. That looks good. This side wasn't that bad because I'll tell you my right side, my left side is the worst side for me to be trying to do a really fancy look like this because huh, I'm not, I'm right-handed working with my left eye. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just go back in real quickly and pick up that deep purple and set that corner again. I'm going to go in and set that corner again with that deep purple. All right, then I'm going to take my blender, blend it all together, and I got a few little touch-ups. If you have stayed with me, I appreciate you. If you're still with me, if you don't mind, you can send a heart. That lets me know. I know people have to go in and out as we are at home. Some people working from home. Some people with children from home. Thank you for sending those hearts. Thank you. But what I do know, it is a different day because Saturday used to be the day for many of us that were reserved for getting out of the house, going grocery shopping, going to pick up items that we've deplenished through the week, and just to go in and make sure we have everything we need. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first pink that I first, first started with, which was out of this makeup palette, Sante, and I'm going to go in and clean up a little edging around there, y'all, so that this looks just as darling as it did when we first started. There we go. Just like that. Bam. Fixed. Okay. Now, I'm done putting on. I'm not going to put on anything else on those eyes. I am going to do a really good job of going in and blending it so that it looks toned down in those areas. This is a dramatic look. So this is not considered your everyday look, but I wanted to really spend some time talking with you all today. And I wanted to take a risk myself and do something I hadn't done before and try to blend in those different pinks for that ray of uh, that color ray that you can get. And I'm going to fix this edge right here. Now what I'm going to do is get one more clean Neutrogena wipe. <clears throat> And I'm going to wipe my whole face real lightly because now I'm going to put up my primer. I tell y'all, every time I move my head, I'm just impressed by what nature can do. Again, this is self-care during a time of uncertainty. And this is my lemon ginger water that I put on the stove and bought myself for a detox. I added cucumber for flavor. Because I wanted the extra detoxification that cucumbers bring. But for flavor, you can do a strawberry, a blackberry, a blueberry, um, oranges, apples. You can do any kind of fruit that you like. So <clears throat> the next step, after the eyes are done, is to put on, I just use a regular primer. This is Pro Touch. Oh, I got it upside down. Pro Touch um, by Kiss New York. And that is a primer to smooth out the face as well as it gives your makeup your foundation something to stick to so after I do my eyes I use the primer for my eyes I use the color primer for my eyes which was MAC um, laying low pro loungewear paint pot so I used a MAC paint pot for the primer on my eyes and I just rub my primer around how's Cherie's favorite uh Frazier that is one of my teachers that I first encountered, one of my peers, when I first went into career technology. And I was a career tech teacher for eight years. So I taught administrative technology, add me into, and mm, I taught one more class. Not coming to me right now. But for eight years, I took a break from teaching Algebra 1. And I went into career tech, which pulled together both of my degrees, my degree in accounting, as well as my certification in 18 hours in English in education. So um, I love learning as much as I love to, to teach. I love learning. So hi, Sharice. Um, <clears throat> Want to say I'm praying for you, as I know this is a difficult time for all educators because we uh, were kind of caught off guard, just like the rest of the nation, but not to be able to say goodbye to your babies. So they're always our babies, no matter if we teach pre-K or we teach 12th grade, uh, whether we teach small children or whether we teach teenagers, um, we call them our babies, our youth. Um, it's uh, rough. It was. It's, it's hard and it's uncomforting to think about not being able to physically 
give those hugs that we give at the end of the year where we say good job, um, keep going, where we tell them we will see you when you return again for the summer. So, Sharice, I'm praying for you as I'm praying for all educators at this time as uh, we deal with this time of uncertainty through the corona uh, virus. But we're going to keep going, and with those of us who can, we're going to learn how to do self-love, self-care. Uh, we're going to learn to be empathetic for those people who have to be out on the front lines. We are learning to wave through windows. We're learning to stay in touch through social media. So thank you for joining me. I am now going to do uh, my highlighting before I actually put on my base. So I do contour my face. And I do use my hands. So um, I was told when I was actually getting work done from a makeup artist, professional makeup artist, that contouring under the eyes, it is what makes you look very, very perky and awake. So I just told you I'm a person that would prefer to go to work from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. But the society I work in, K-12 education happens from 7.30 to about 4 o'clock at the latest, 4.30. So, um, I definitely always work on making sure I contour the light under my eyes. Also, as you can see, I fan it out, and I'll fix it later. It kind of gets everywhere. That's okay. I fan it out because you will learn as you begin to do your own makeup, um, your own best features. So once I put on makeup, you can see my eyes probably look twice as big. So my eyes are a body feature that I really like on my own face, a facial feature that I really love about myself. And then I do have a very nice cheekbone that if I can get the makeup quite right, it really accentuates um, a high cheekbone that I have. So for me, when I go up under the eye, it's just not the eye, it's extended out to this cheekbone. And I kind of extend it out to here because it sets my makeup line with my eyes. When you begin to contour, there's not a right way to contour for everybody. Everybody's face is shaped differently. Everybody's skin tone needs something different. So there are principles, but I want to guarantee you there's what a makeup artist will do with one person's face, they're not going to do for another person's face. So then for me, I also contour right above my eyebrows. It's just a place for me that the light tends to hit my face when I turn. You can kind of see it there. So I always contour like right above my eyebrows. That's just for me. Nobody told me that when I began to play around with contour. That is what worked for me. It's a place that I want to highlight because I want to draw people into my eye. And then I use the knuckle of my hand. If I have it everywhere to kind of set it, and it's really right here that I want to draw people in at the arch of my brow. And don't worry about what you get on the brow because I have an eyeliner, brow liner that will take that off. Okay, so that's that part. Then for me, I contour. I got a what you might say a wide forehead. I was blessed with that beautiful forehead from my father. And I don't take it back. So... Um, the, the light tends to hit, bam, 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 there it go. That's why I'm contouring it. You see that light going through there? It tends to hit the light when I'm in a room, if I'm speaking, or if there's good light in the room, my forehead tends to pick up a lot of light. Then I like to do the bottom of my chin. That's just me. And I do right above my mouth. Now... That's the light part of the contour. Then when I go in to add color back into my face, ooh, that detox is just, that detox that I did is so hard to explain, but even as I put on makeup, it appears the more makeup I put on, the more my complexion is shining under the makeup. And I want to tell you all, that is due to this detox water that I made. Again, it is a gallon of water, one Lemon rolled, so the juices I use, cut in half, squeeze, throw the lemon off in there. Um, a sprig of ginger root, cut that sprig up, throw it off in there, boil for 10 minutes, and you have your own detox water. Lemon has uh, the natural purity to go in and break down things that get stuck in your intestinal system. It breaks down things. It breaks, uh, breaks through things that clog your pores. So 
The more makeup I put on, I have on no highlighter. That is the detox doing its job um, behind the scene. And I have cucumbers in there because that's the just the flavor of choice that I chose to have because actually I have my live, Eat Well, Live Well book here. And um, it's going to tell me what cucumbers actually do for me so that you will know. I'm going to look real quick. See if I can find the, the detoxing. Um, well hydrated skin. So you know that I'm telling the truth. Right here under well hydrated skin, you will see cucumber. Okay? So that's what the cucumber is doing for me. This is, this is out of the book, Eat Pretty, Live Well, a guide, a, a guided journal for nourishing your body inside and out. So this is my journal. I do have things that are highlighted in it. I am an avid reader. Um, and you can see that I have things that are underlined off in this journal as well. Um, so, so many things that I use to become and stay the person that continues to grow, even with my own skincare regimen. So now I'm going to go, oh, this was RK by Kiss 3D Contour Artist. It's cream. It is a cream, and I was just using this color right here. Now I'm going to transition this color for the dark contour. Um, you can pick this up. I just picked this up at my local beauty shop, y'all. Okay. Oh, I forgot one thing. I got to go back. I have to go back. I did not contour for my nose, Lord Jesus. For some people, that's the main thing they're trying to do is contour their poor little nose. You know, there are things that we try to... Try to change, and I guess they say a straighter nose looks, it's appealing. So, <laughs> I contoured that nose. Now, I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to use my fingers to reset the color in my, in my face. Because I've used so much of the white highlight. And this is all done before you put on your, um, and you can see my nose is starting to kind of change. It doesn't look like the little plumped up nose. It's starting to look like a more defined, elongated nose. So that is what the contour does. And I told you in the beginning, I don't worry about where my makeup line is on the inside or on the outside. Of course, I wipe off the fall off with a Neutrogena wipe. But my contour that I use also helps to set my inner makeup on my inner eyes so I just kind of do like that and I bring it down so you will see me bring my contour contour down on my cheek from my nose and then I will make that line right through here to set my jawbone and I will follow that line and bring color back into my tone and I also use it just to set where I want my cheeks to highlight it so I do mine a little bit different. When you start doing your own makeup regularly, you know, you'll play around with it and you'll figure out where it's best to contour for your own face. Then I contour all the way down. And again, I bring mine around. And I go around because I contour real lightly. Now you can see why I contour on my lip. You can see that little bit of, looks like highlighter on there. That's why I do that because it's going to plump my lips. When I put on my lip liner, I'm going to have a natural highlight on the top of that lip because I put on um, this bright contour first. So that's why I do that. You can see that my lip is naturally highlighted because I put that there. Then I go and fix this up here. You know, I said I only want this part to be highlighted. I do a V right in the center of my face. And I do that V and I work it out. I fan it out so that only... Uh, right above my eyebrow is only where it's highlighted. And I kind of keep that place where it can pick up the light through my forehead. Then, this is what pulls my look together. I have a lot of people that always say you always look so well polished. That's because I actually take my, found, my um, highlighter and I run it along my hairline. And I don't wear, I don't put my foundation along my hairline, but I will literally do this to my hairline so that you can't really kind of see where my makeup begins and where my hair ends. And you just kind of got to work that in so that it's not so dark and it's blended. So I blend it with my hands. And there you go. And then I go here because it sets that crease, uh, that straight edge that I want in my eyeshadow. 
So that's the last place that I will blend with the color because it sets my crease on my eyes. And now my eyeshadow through using the blending through here and the blending through here, my eyeshadow is now set. And you can see the places that are highlighted. You can see right around, right above my eyebrow is a little bit highlighted. Um, right beyond under my eyes, you can see that highlight when I move and put my head down. Right below my top lip, and you can see around my chin. But I only want kind of like the little tip of my chin because it helps create elongated face. Because I have a chubby face because I'm a, a little heavier of a girl. And so this takes away some of that down here that I naturally have as I have extra weight. That contouring of the chin kind of chisels that away. And it really shows up when I take pictures and different things. So that's that. Now I'm contoured. And I can see when I move that my little tip of my nose is going to be a focal point. My forehead and below my eyes, above my eyebrows, and right above my mouth. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my foundation. I've contoured and I'm ready to go. My foundation is a MAC Makeup Studio Fix Fluid FPS 15 by Spectrum. And let me put the cap back on so I can tell you. It is NW Fortet 3. So that is the foundation. Oh, my foundation gets off a little bit between winter and summer, depending on how hot of cold, how hot or cold of a winter or summer we have. So I use my foundation brush. I dab it on. I do not like a lot of foundation. So those people that you see on their lives putting on four, five series of foundations. As you can see, I don't have very many skin issues. Um, many days, I can just go plainly with um, a face oil and look really pretty and stunning like I just came out of California, Florida sun, if I just go with this oil. So, for me, I'm not looking for heavy coverage. I just like makeup and I'm just looking for smooth coverage. So, what I do is I uh, put that on kind of evenly. I just dot it on. I've always dotted it on, never done it any differently. And And there I go. Now, I told you that I've been out in the yard. I had a few more mosquito bites and different things. So I might go a little bit heavier with foundation a little bit just because out in that country grass, honey, them mosquitoes, they say hello. And we have to fight with those sometimes. So just uh, maybe a second coat. There we go. If you're still with me, I hope I didn't lose connection. Look like I still see a one. You can send me a heart. And it looks like on my other computer that I'm using my laptop. Not my laptop, my tablet. I can still see that I'm still there. Okay, so I'm still there. I see it too. Um, Sharonda, thanks for joining me. She is with uh, IntelliTravel. She works in the travel industry. I am praying for the travel industry right now. As many people's primary form of enjoyment with travel is through the cruise ships. Praying for every person who may be stuck on a cruise ship, unable to get off a cruise ship, or maybe feeling just a little bit down because your travel plans have maybe been a little bit derailed during this pandemic. Everybody's travel plans, if you had any, have been derailed. So we are dealing with so much right now. So I'm going to allow that to sit there. That looks good enough for me. Of course, I can't get rid of the mosquito bites, y'all. They'll have to go away on their own, but... That's what happens when you do your love zone and you're out working in the country in the garden. So we don't going to worry about those. But otherwise, it looks like good coverage. Now, here is the thing. My makeup never really pops until I get ready to do my eyes. So if you're doing your makeup and you tend to get discouraged because, oh, it's not working out. It doesn't look good. It's not as defined as I want it to look. Don't worry about that. Um, my eyes never seem to get really defined until I begin to do the 
detail work on my eyelids and my lashes. So, here we go. Here's the part where I really start getting excited. So, I still use a black liner on my eyes. And I just go in on the crease. Some people like it light. Some people like it really dark. I fooled around and left my um, other mirror that I used in the bathroom. So, I'm just going to have to take it off. Your blend is good for a lot of things. See, I just took that off. It was a little dark. Got a little bit uneven. I'm trying to use the camera as a mirror here, y'all. So, you can go in. Hi, Denisha Smith. Hello. Thanks for joining. I'm going to give you a wave. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to go in here. And put that a little bit deeper. But for me, this is when makeup begins to pop for me. Is when I start to actually do the detail around, around my eyes. And you can do as little of as or as much as... You would like when you're dealing with lining your eyes. Now, lining your eyes is is a is a truly a choice. It depends on which makeup artist you use. Some people are gonna say that's outdated, that's 80s, that's 90s. You don't line your eye anymore. What I want to tell you is is your makeup. You put on your makeup the way you needed to put it on so that you feel good about yourself. It's the same way as if you go shopping with somebody and you see an outfit you really love and they say, oh, I don't like that on you. I really like this one over here. So you buy it because another person said that they liked it, but then you get it home, you put it in your closet and you don't wear it. Why? Because you didn't like it. And Or if you wear it, you don't feel comfortable because it's not the thing that you really wanted for yourself. So I say with eyeliner, do what makes you feel beautiful. For me, it sets my eyes apart, and I feel beautiful when I um, wear eyeliner. I still wear eyeliner as part of my signature look. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set my eyelashes. This is a MAC, uh, MAC False Lashes Maximizer. It looks like this in a white bottle. And I, I, I don't wear lashes. I'm still going to venture out there and give me some lashes at some point, but... I don't wear lashes because I already have a pretty thick lash starting off. So this also helps to add a falsy look. So if there's any spaces in between, there's uh, some filler in here, some filter and some filler that's going to extend my lash and fill in my lash a little bit. So it's kind of a lash trick. You put it on before you actually put on your mascara. Okay, so I'm going to put the falsy on on top. And I'm going to kind of work it in. And the key is to wiggle it out when you put it on so that it can do the falsifying. Then I'm going to go up under and do the same thing. I'm going to coat and wiggle and extend my eye. Now, it's really hard to see at first because it is really white. It's a white eyeliner. I mean, a white mascara. It's a white falsy look, so... It's kind of hard to see because it's white. But I promise you it's going to work. And then you try to kind of make sure that it's not sticking anywhere because you don't want your, your uh, mascara to be sticking everywhere. All right, so don't look like much when you put it on, but I've been doing my um, eyes a long time. And what I can tell you is I see a significant difference in my eyes when I use the falsy than when I don't. So, just doing this. Again, this is a lot harder for me on the left-hand side. Uh-oh. We'll go and pick up every, any little spots that we get along the way. I keep Q-tips with me when I'm doing makeup. And that's for if I get a little spot, I could just pick it up or blend it in. I might have to get, I might have took off some makeup. I might have to. Put a little fix right there, but for right now, we keep going. So, and I give the falsies a time to set in. A little piece don't want to stay on there, and that need to do what it need to do. I have certainly enjoyed my Saturday with you all who have um, decided to join in with me.
Um, now I'm going to go in with my actual mascara. And I do put my mascara on the top and on the bottom of my top lash. And this is where my makeup begins to pop for me. I am a mascara girl. And when I'm able to do this to my eyes, my look tends to begin to come together for me. And again, I'm working against the grain because I left my mirror in the bathroom, but the FaceTime will do. And now I'm going to do my bottom lashes. So I already have a pretty significant um, lash line, as you can see. But I will one day get lashes. These are sticking together. So you got to kind of work to make sure that your lashes don't stick together. And mascara gets a little tacky after a while. So I'm going to try to... There they go. So, as you can see, there's a, to me, there's a significant difference between my left, my right eye, then my right eye, my left eye, who does not have the lashes on yet. So, then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh-oh, Lord have mercy. Slow down, Sharma, because you don't have a mirror. I'm going by touch and feel, mostly. All right, there we go. And now... I am building my left eyelash just like that. Okay, so you want to build out that last eyelash. And I want to make sure that they're as thick as the other eye. Now, when you can really see the work of a good lash job, uh-oh, except I just got some everywhere, and I need to take a little bit off. That's why you have this edger right here, so you can take that off, okay? If it smudges. So, there you have it. Now you have that. So, mostly, this makeup look is pretty much so done. I'm going to now do my top brow. I'm going to use a um, Go Brown eyebrow, uh, eyebrow mascara to set my top brow. If you remember in the beginning, I told you, don't worry if you get a little makeup on your brows when you're doing your highlighting. Don't worry about it because there it is right here. You're going to go back over your eyebrow with this eyebrow mascara anyway. So, hi, Kanisha. Thanks that you're still there. So... Now that we've got our eyes done, okay, and you can see that kind of there that the lashes are done. Now that we've got our eyes done, let's go and put on our blush. And before we do our blush, we're going to go ahead and do some banana setting powder. Um, if you're looking for a high glam, then your banana powder, this is a MAC product as well. This is HD High Definition um, Flawless, HD Flawless, Absolute New York, okay? So, oh, I didn't buy this from MAC. I thought this was MAC, but it's not. So, it's a very, very loose powder, so you have to be really, really careful. So, when I use this powder right here, I just barely tap it on like this, and then I lay the top brush down, and I tap it right back. In the container because it's a really really loose powder but this is a finishing powder and this is the powder that gives you that um i call it the hollywood look it's the powder that sets your makeup in and that kind of creates for me this um tan powder for me kind of creates like a natural glow in my skin but you just pat it on really, really loosely, and it's a sitting powder. It's a setting powder, so you have to kind of let it sit for just a minute. And it looks really funny when you first put it on because it looks like no way. 
but it is a finisher for me of my makeup when I get through. So it is the, the part of my makeup job that makes me feel like I've been to a makeup artist. It is a setting powder to set your makeup. Come here, Kendra. Never mind, I got it. Um, it's the setting powder. Hi, Nisi. There's my niece, Miss Jasmine Meadows. Thanks for joining me, Nisi. Amy is over here trying to uplift others during the pan epidemic, during our coronavirus COVID-19, by giving some uplifting words, some encouragement, some empowerment, a little bit of knowledge, um, as well as doing my makeup that I used to do every day that I kind of got away from doing because I'm at home now and um, we should be encouraged to keep the keep our normal routine as close to possible as we had it. And I wore makeup every day, not because I needed to, but because I simply love, I enjoy playing in makeup. I love the, love the, the confidence, the increased confidence that it gives me. And um, it's just something I love to do. So when you have finished putting on the setting powder, you let it sit for a little bit. And the goal is to brush rub it all in so that it becomes a part of the makeup. And it gives you this finish that is just amazing. Hi, Sharonda Shepard. Thank you for joining. So when you get finished, you have a finish that is amazing when you use a Setting paper, uh, powder, some people call it banana powder, but it is called setting powder. Okay, so the foundation and my makeup is set. The last thing that I'm going to do to add um, some color to this uh, makeup to highlight it is I am going to use a highlighter. If I can find my highlighter. I thought I had everything that I needed over here on this table. But I don't see my highlighter. So give me just a minute. I use a gold highlighter. But I'm not seeing my gold highlighter right now. Anywhere. So I may have to go back to an older, different highlighter that I have used in the past. Maybe it's in here. Oh, I found it. So the highlighter that I use on the daily to highlight my makeup job when I am finished is, again, it's an over-the-counter product. It's a Wet n' Wild, believe it or not, and it's a little bit warm, but it's a Mega Low Highlighting Powder. Um, it's an Illuminator, and it's Magalo is the name of it. So I'm going to use my highlighter brush to simply highlight my cheeks. And as you can see, okay, those of you have missed, if you go back and watch, um, I have my recipe for my detox water. And my detox water is what's causing my face to shine on my nose. I have not put on any highlighter yet. Here's the highlighter, last step of, of my makeup job. But my face is, uh, my complexion is glowing underneath because I chose to begin a, a detox about two days ago. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Miss Nicole. She says, your makeup is always, always flawless. Teach me. That's why I'm online. Um, I try to do makeup jobs or or makeup look that should only take you about 20 minutes to do. Um, I don't do all the fancy stuff. I have about five brushes, five products, and you should be good to go. So if you want to learn how to do this look, go back and catch the live at the beginning and do a replay, and you will see step by step. You may have to do some fast forwards and some rewinds because I did a lot of talking today because I really wanted to uplift and empower people um, today as I did this, this uh, makeup tutorial live, but... I don't have on any highlighter. That is my natural complexion. I do have some contour up under the eyes, above the eyelid, up eyebrows, um, down the center of my nose, above my lip and my chin. But that complexion that's glowing underneath that makeup, as I turn, I promise you, I have not put on any highlighter yet. That is deciding to do a physical, mental, and spiritual detox. So the physical detox was with Pure detox water that I made at home, a full lemon, um, a few cuts of a sprig of ginger water, and on any given day, I can add cucumbers or strawberries or blackberries or blueberries, apples, oranges, anything I want to from the fruit category or vegetable category that feels right to taste to me. I did a home facial, five-step home facial, where... Um, 
I started with my Mary Kay facial scrub as a cleanser, followed by a um, abrasive, which was an apricot scrub to scrub off any dead skin that I had. I followed with a steam, facial steam, uh, right at home, fill your, your basin, your, your sink basin with hot water, as hot as it'll come up. Fill it about oh, this far from your face. Hold your face over that basin bowl, your sink bowl. Put a towel over your head and stay in there. I put a timer on for 10 minutes. I think I made it seven. When I came out, my face was sweating. There was sweat dripping all down my face, and that let me know that that steam had generated and my face was opening up and my pores were cleaning. After I patted my face dry, I had a balancing oil, um, a toner that I use with green tea, aloe vera, and a facial tonic. Followed by um, jojoba hydrating, deep conditioning, bright, and skin softening oil. So I went into a spiritual detox where I went into prayer, um, reading some, uh, meditating on some passages in the Bible, as well as doing my healing singing bowl meditation for the spiritual detox, physical detox, and mental detox. Deciding that I'm only going to retain and create a positive experience out of the challenges that will be faced during the coronavirus. So here we go. Now I'm going to actually put on real highlighter. I don't know at this point with me have just doing a detox if it'll help or hurt. Okay, well, it's, it's doing a little something. So I always put highlighter shimmer on, on, on my cheeks and I go from here to here. Oh, I should have did this last. Okay, so remember when I tell you makeup, sometimes you have to take a break. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I should have put on uh, my blush first, and that's my fault. And my blush is um, Fox Shore Extra Dimensions Blush. It is a MAC product. So let me get my blush brush. Let me put my blush on first before my highlighter. But to do that, I smile and get the ends of my chubby little cheeks. And then because of my cheekbones, I then follow my brush. I go a little further up. I actually angle all the way up to my hairline, you all. And um, I set my blush in an angled tone. So I do put a little bit here, but I really, really dislike seeing people walk around with two blush spots on their face. So I tend to drag my blush that will go up in the same direction as my highlighter but I do put on enough blush where you can tell hi Mike Brown thanks again for joining back I do put on enough blush where you can tell that I actually have on blush but then I drag that brush up in an angle and it depends on the look I'm going for for that day if I'm going for a soft look this is about as much blush as I will do um if I'm speaking at an event and I really want my face to be noticed from afar, then I'll put on a lot more blush. But for a soft, everyday look, that's as much blush as I want. You can kind of see it. But I hate to see that blush where people put those made cheeks. They got two little circles. So that's why I drag my blush all the way up. And then the last thing I have started, I can start back over, is I go in and I highlight like above, right at my eye crease. And right above those cheeks where I just put that blush. And you can see um, that shimmer when I turn. My nose is already shiny, y'all, because of the detox. But I'm going to put a little bit there now. It's really shining. And then I put a little bit across the forehead. But I go back over where I set that contour above my eyes. I go back right there. And then I tap right here. Just a little tap. And where I had contour over those lips. I'll put a little bit right there. And now my face is finished. So the first set of things that makes my face pop when I do makeup is always when I decide to put on the eyeliner and the mascara. Um, prior to that, my makeup never really feels quite defined. But once I get my eyes built up with my mascara and my eyeliner on, then I really start to feel like, girl, you got on some makeup. You really doing something. Um, the last thing that I want to do, I'm still old-fashioned. I have a plum, um, I say a dollar nine on here. The price tag is still on here, but um, auto lip O2, and I actually go by the tone, the color that's actually at the end. So I did. Um, I always deal with a, a plum or 
a kind of a ruby, but today, since I did that deep purple, I'm going to go with the plum. And I'm still old-fashioned. Some people will not. They do not believe, again, in an eyeliner or a lip liner. I do. So do what makes you feel good. And this is the second thing that happens when I really feel like um, my makeup is popping is when I get to my lips. Oh, Nicole said my makeup um, always is flawless, even through glasses. Thank you for telling me that. I've got the glasses here, and I'm going to put them on at the end so people can see that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay, so let me stop talking so I don't mess this up. So... Now I have lined my lips. I take a moment to make sure the humps are even. And then to extend your lipstick or your gloss and to um, do a, oh gosh, what is the look called? To do a feathered look or a, um, it's going to come to me in a minute. Um, a transitional look. I put a little bit of my eye uh, lip liner a little bit deeper into my lip ombre to get an ombre look. So here it goes. So that's an ombre. How you get an ombre look. And you'll actually see that ombre look come to light in just a minute. Right now, it just looks kind of odd. But I'm going to do, I love, love glosses. So I got several glosses here. I think I'm going to do this color jet, which is a really beautiful pink, and follow it with a gloss. Okay, so let's see what this fit look like. Now, this is the part you never do know. Mm. Oh, that's kind of cute. Now, I'm not a dark lipstick girl, as you can tell. But I'm going to rub it in, and I'm going to fix that darkness in just a minute. I'm just not a person that likes dark, dark lipstick. But it is pretty much so popping with the, uh, with the eyes because the purple is picking up the tones right, right through the eyes. You can see the different tones. Okay. So... When you want to see if your eyes is really popping, lay your head back and go from left to right because this is what people see as you blink. So I have hooded eyes, so when I'm looking directly at you, you're not going to get all of that tone. But as I do natural inflections and I'm talking, you're going to get that tone. So to lighten up that look, I love, I have all kind of <clears throat> glosses. I'm going to play around and see which gloss is going to lighten that look. Still too dark for me. I just don't like dark lipstick. There we go. And so to lighten that look, you can go in and put on a more sure uh, lip gloss. This is a diamond gloss just kind of over the counter. And if it's still too dark, remember what I told you. It's just makeup. A good blot will do the trick. A blot in a rub, and you can go right back in with that lighter lip gloss. Now, this is about as dark as I like it. That's just the way that I am. Kendra, yeah, can you go bring me a little cup of water and set it right there in a hairbrush? All right, I'm my makeup ass assistant. Uh huh, both. Hurry up. My makeup assistant is working in the background. So, that is pretty much so um, my daily look when I get ready to go to work, as I promised. Um, she says it looks flawless even through glasses. I'm going to clean these glass lens off right quick. I do wear glasses, and uh, I don't like the hassle that goes with a contact. Um, I also have allergies, and so me trying to keep a contact in is really, really hard for me, so... I have been just accustomed to wearing glasses for so long. It's what's comfortable, especially now that I'm older and I actually have a no-line bifocal. <laughs> How about them cookies? 
Okay, yes, yeah, set that right there. And so here is what my makeup still usually does come through even when I have on glasses, as Miss Nicole Mitchell said in the comments. Yes. So, Jesus. I was really cleaning up, y'all, before I decided to do this live. House cleaners probably everywhere. But here is what I generally look like once I get ready to go and put my makeup on. Kendra, can you go get mom some earrings? Yeah. Gold ones. Here we go. Just go. Spring some gold earrings. I usually end my tutorial by putting on accessories. And I did forget today, but I am going to show you the last detail that I do is usually my best yeah, to pull my hair down on the side because I really do like a really clean cut look. So I cannot get to my stylist today, but this is what you would see Miss Charmin Williams doing in the morning to pull that final look off. And there... You have my final glam look for today. That was a beautiful thank you, love. Yeah. And my assistance has brought me my final touch. Put on a pair of earrings, and that girl is ready to go. Hey, I like it, I like it, I like it. Thank you, Sharonda Shepard, who says, so pretty. I appreciate you. So here we go. We've got earrings on. We're ready to go in our natural state to go see. What the world is not doing. Because we're going to be going seeing on TV. But it does not hurt during this time to um, use every self-care practice. Thank you, Tyra Carwell, for watching and sending me some love. Um, Tutu Lady, who now, I don't know. Tyra, I've been thinking about you. Um, she opened up a hazardous cleaning company. So I've been wondering about Miss Tyra Codwell, who I have not had a chance to personally make a contact with, if she has been called in anywhere during this epidemic to help keep us um, safe and disinfected. That's, she has a small business, and that's what they do is go in and clean up hazardous waste and different things. And when I talked to her last, she was looking at getting the certification that you need to go in I do believe with hospitals so if you want to and you're working right now and and you're interested in securing more clients I have uh, two people that are charged nurses director of cleaning for a hospital has been on the live today I encourage at this time let's do this um I definitely want to support every single um small business owner that has tuned in to this makeup live for me today. This is a way for me to continue to stay connected uh, personally with family and friends, but also reconnect with those people who really look forward to seeing me do um, blessings, uh, business, beauty and business every day um, on Saturdays. I really want it to connect with those people again. It's been a while because Life in the Go kind of took on a life of its own as I began to go to all the spring events with Teachers Appreciation Foundation, the Dream Print, um, LaShonda Nicole with um, Simply Right Event Planners with the Business Besties Brunch, okay? So, uh, Blessings Business and Beauty. Wanted to make sure, those, those three things are my love. Um, blessing people. So, I do have on my core meditation shirt today, not far from me, um, is my meditation bowl. Um, Tyra says she would like for me to mention her flower shop. Would you actually put, because she's a serial entrepreneur as well, she has several businesses, and she did just launch a flower shop that is there for you for any event that you need, whether you need centerpieces, whether you have a kid right now, we know we don't know what prom is going to look like this year, whether it be postponed, but we are looking forward to life as normal at some point. Um, if you have a need to send flowers upon uh, the death or upon the congratulation, uh, congratulatory um, effort of someone, if you will either um, put your uh, the name of your flower shop there, I would encourage anybody who's a small a business owner and you've tuned in today you can even go back later and share this live and allow people to drop 
the name of their small business, what product or services that they provide, as well as um, how they can be contacted. Um, this is the time for us to support each other in small business. Shayla Renee, thank you for watching and tuning in. This is a time for us to, I'm still getting beautified, y'all. I see some hair sticking up. Let me see what I can do about that. Um, this is a time for us to continue to support one another through business, through friendship, through love, through empathy, to get through this. This is not a personal crisis, you all. This is a national crisis. It will touch every living individual on the globe. Um, it's an equalizer, as I shared at the beginning, that fame, fortune, finances, your social economic status is one time that it does not matter. We are all going to need um, each other. For those of you, um, I do have as well, I talk all the time about be having a spiritual cleansing. So cleansing your, your mind, cleansing your body, and cleansing your spirit so that your attitude is strong, so that your, your fortitude, your personal fortitude, through all of the un unknown, it needs to stay strong. Those of you who have children, our children are nervous, y'all. Okay, so bouquets for you, Flower Shop is located in Dell City. You can inbox Tyra, T-Y-R-A, Caldwell, for your floral needs. So she has dropped her business there. Ryan Blair has dropped her information in the comments how you can get um, a copy of her book. For those of you that are wondering... Well, Charmin, what kind of business are you promoting? At this time, um, I stay pretty busy as I spoke. I have a full-time job, which is full-time in education. I educate, support teachers in being the, the greatest success factors that they can be in the everyday classroom for our children in K-12, particularly secondary schools, um, ninth grade through 12th grade. So that is my, my, my purpose walk during the day as an employee, but outside as an employee, I create um, personal curriculum. I'm a curriculum expert. If you have an event that you want to bring to life and you want engagement curriculum for others to, to be able to take home, to follow along during your event, I am a designer of curriculum. Um, I'm well known as a, a spotlight, highlight, keynote panelist guest. Speaking, as you can tell, is my love. It is my forte to educate. Um, I love you too, Tyra. You're absolutely welcome. So um, educating through training. I am a trainer by heart. I participate in very many organizations who will call me in to train their staff. One of my largest clients is um, Oklahoma Career Tech. I have trained teachers for Oklahoma Career Tech, first-time teachers going into the classroom, for business marketing and information technology, which is the BMIC program, as well as their health sciences careers, as well as their, um, we used to call it home ec, it's, it's slipping my mind. Um, it'll come to me, it's a lot going on y'all for me to remember. But um, I am at my best when I'm supporting other people in learning. I am a life and career coach. So there are very many people, um, they are my private clients, so I don't often get to share their experiences with you, but those that are interested in going from um, one industry to the next, I can, I can share with Tyra. I know so many of her business endeavors because she has been a client of mine several times that does not mind sharing because I've been such a big part of and being able to experience and support her um, from behind as she has done fashion shows, um, all kind of different things. She's somebody, I don't talk to her all the time, but at least three or four times a year, she will call me and let me know what she's doing. And I will share with her uh, the best of my business expertise to help her to make those endeavors successful. Um, someone has posted, um, Somebody just posted, which Charmin, that age group needs us, um, and you've helped me too out um, with knowing. Yeah, I mean, I am currently working on several things. Uh, if you know me, I am somewhat of a perfectionist, and I, I, I believe that within the next three months, 
Well, the probably within the next month. I just hate to sell myself too short and disappoint anybody who's awaiting that information. But I am working in my private company. I, I also work with helping teachers obtain their teaching certificate. So English and math are my favorite subjects to teach uh, high school as well as adults. So you're looking like looking at reintroducing adults to um, go back to college and brushing up on those writing skills and those entry level college skills. So there's there's a myriad of things that I do. I am right now using this platform to build knowledge so that people begin to trust that they can believe what Sharman Williams shares um, to the public, whether it's an event that's going on, whether it's something that can grow you uh, emotionally or physically or financially. I want to be able to share that information right now. I don't have a particular product to place in someone's hands right now. The way everything is going, I'm, I kind of am the product. I, I do the private tutoring. I do the private coaching. I'm currently working on my website. I'll be posting that soon to all of my Facebook pages where you can actually go in online and book time for me as I put my available dates out there, whether you need to be uh, start an organization. A lot of times, uh, people don't like to deal with the beginnings of opening up a business, but that is my forte, helping you decide whether you really need to go the nonprofit route, whether you need to go the sole proprietor route, or whether or not you need to look at a limited liability corporation. I've worked with partnerships, creating the contracts and the paperwork for your uh, federal uh, number and your state licensing number. So if it's business or education, those are my first loves, and, and beauty is just something I like to dibble and dabble in and through fashion. So if you have a need, Nicole Mitchell, I will keep you in mind. Uh, Nicole, I will be sending you out information and contacting you. I'm going to ask you when this live is over to go back and inbox your personal information um, to me so that I can help you definitely with getting your teacher certificate, many um public education institutions, they do offer um, new teacher training and the training to have, try to help you get your certificate. What I provide is a more one-on-one -on -one where I go through and kind of help figure out for you what's the area you've been struggling with. And I build a, a special plan to help you overcome those areas or single areas of difficulties to continue to increase your score or to go ahead and pass the test. I have a 100% pass rate with five clients um, in the first session that I had was 100% pass rate for those who participated in tutoring um, through Core Connect Works to actually going and teaching their teaching test and taking the teaching test, passing it, and getting their, their uh, state certification. So I am still available in those areas. Of course, I'm going to be available a lot more as we go to this online work platform. I do not know if I'm going to be, you know, required to be online eight hours, you know, the same as my work schedule. I don't know if I'm going to be required to be on call. I don't know if I'm going to be required to be at a physical um, school building as support staff with administration. As I find out those things, I will definitely let everybody know I am working on several books. There are about six of them. Um, and my goal this year, 2019, was my year of clarity. And I was sharing with um, Nicole LaShonda, one of my business besties, just the other day. I now know why God dropped in my spirit that this year would be my year of completion. That's because he would be unbeknowing to me, not in a way that I expected, will be giving me an opportunity to have more time. Even if that time is the 40-minute drive that it used to take me to go from my home to my workplace uh, twice a day, which is over 80 minutes a day, which is right at two hours a day of time, even if I go full time online, um, the social distancing, the requirements of not being three or more gathered together for the best way for us as a nation to heal from this crisis is going to allow me not to have to, to look at different options for servicing um, my clients. I'm still working on curriculum for um, events, for clients, even though we are stalling on events day and we're having to push back, that's okay. 
I have full faith that if you have an event, this is just time to perfect your event. Um, I have an event that I had scheduled for April the 18th, the second core meditations with Charmin experience. You will be getting an email really soon over the next two weeks with my decision whether I'm going to postpone indefinitely or try to set a new live event date. I am truly going to let the Lord and the Spirit uh, lead me on those things. So uh, thank you, Sharonda Shepherd, for sharing with me that I'm a blessing and encouraging me to keep going. I definitely need those words during um, this time of uncertainty. So I'm going to try not to play too loud, but I'm going to attempt to bless you with just a little healing singing bowl meditation before I get off of this live today. So here we go. Be blessed to you, I say, namaste, the light in me honors the light in you. Please, please, please take care of yourself during this time of crisis. Find ways to continue to love on one another from a distance. Find time to get yourself up every day and do what you need to do to continue life as normal, as close to normal as you can, staying at home, being a beacon of light for your children, um, for your family members. Um, I love each and every one of you that come under the sound of my voice, whether I know you personally or whether you are a Facebook friend or whether this video has been shared and you're under the sound of my voice. If no one has told you that they love you, I do. Um, if no one has given you a hug, I will. And I want to say to you, be well, be blessed, and we will make it through this crisis. Make sure you practice all of your self-care. Love yourself harder than you've ever loved yourself until we make it through this. Because for some of us, we are in a room just with ourselves. So again, I love you and take care. And this has been self-care through a time of uncertainty with Charmin Williams under a Charmin Williams brand. Life in the Go, Core Connect Works, um, all the other things that I do, uh, Core Connect Health, all of those things. I want you to be blessed. Keep working. Keep climbing. Keep smiling. Keep hoping. And uh, keep the faith. Till then, be blessed. Bye-bye.